ton of freaking options. You can build it with the motherboard on this side. You can build it with the motherboard on the other side. You can put the IO on the bottom. You can put the IO on the top. You can mount your GPU vertically, like over here, like you can on a lot of other cases. You can mount your GPU upright. Okay, this is pretty cool. You can actually take your GPU and mount it like over here where this radiator mount is on the side and it just sits alongside your motherboard. So there's tons of cool options and you guys are going to help me determine how to build it. It's going to be a super high performance machine, RTX 3090, 12900K, DDR5, basically the absolute top of the line. And you guys are going to tell me how you want it done. And the video is going to be brought to you by NZXT. NZXT wants to make PC building easier. With NZXT Build, you just set a budget, see how the computer performs in your favorite games, and Build takes care of the rest. You can use the link down below to get your own custom PC today. Now, one thing I want to jump in and let you guys know very early on in the stream here is that we are no longer doing super chats. So instead of super chats, we are doing what we're calling merch messages. So instead of sending $5 or $10 or $20 or whatever, of which YouTube takes a substantial cut, you can just go on LTT store, you can fill out a message, and it can be whatever you want pretty much, and we're going to be able to show it on stream rather than on the chat. So it'll actually show up right up at the top of the stream here. And instead of part of the cut going to Google, um, that portion of the cut that is not our you know, obvious profit on something like a water bottle or a, uh, this is our new indoor hoodie, by the way, available in two colors, light gray and oh, yeah, there's one, uh, light gray or teal. Aqua, I think we call it. Uh, so rather than going to Google, it goes to the manufacturers of our, of our clothing and our merch or to our shipping team, uh, which fun fact, a lot of you guys might not know this, but our shipping team is actually some former NCIXers. Uh, not entirely, but the guy running it is the old, manage, the old shipping manager at NCIX who just serendipitously got in touch with me and was like, hey, I'm going to do a, you know, a, a third party logistics business. And I was like, Patrick, I love Patrick. <laughs> we totally need some third party logistics. How much fun is this? So let's go ahead and get started for our motherboard. We've gone with the Maximus Z690 Hero. And can I just say how much I appreciate this Asus ROG? Look at this. How easy is it to tell what generation of product this is? Jake? Can you tell at a glance what generation of product this is? I think it might be Z690. Z690. I love it. I wondered when Asus was going to give up on just the Roman numeral numbering. Because tell me this, Jake, then. What generation of product is a Maximus 6? <laughs> it's actually impossible. We made it up to, I think, 13 by the time they finally gave up and were like, we should just do what we do on every other one of our product lines. Everything other than ROG, on their Primes, on their Tufts, everything else. And we should just put the chipset name in so people have any idea what the heck it is that they're buying. So this board, some key benefits. You've got this giant RGB doodad up here, lots of RGB actually. You've got three headers down at the bottom, a fourth one up at the top with three of them being five volt addressable RGB, lots of fan headers, lots of power delivery, and that's a really important one because this CPU, the 12900K, it can be a bit of a beast both to cool and to power, because it can suck back up to 250 watts under sustained load. I mean, to be clear, that's a good thing, because you get a lot of performance out of it when you... Ooh, is there something in the socket? I, by the way, I uh, never recommend uh, blowing into your CPU socket. It's just that this is going to be a do as I say, not as I do moment here. There's a little... It looks like a little skin flake or something. Um, Andy, can you, can you get us... Uh, a look at what we're dealing with here. Can you see that? It looks like a little lint or a little a little skin flake or something like that. You see that? You got it? Here, I can get you a better look at it. So, oh, I see that. yeah, we're just gonna. Um, you know what? It's probably. Yeah, we're gonna. You know, how many times do you live, really, right? Okay. So our twelve nine hundred K is going. To, look, Jake. We're gonna know soon enough if it's not gonna work, right? Soon. This is gonna take like an hour to build. That's true. This is gonna take a little while to build. How y'all doing in the chat? Hey, thanks for tuning in. Looks like we got a few people watching now. Sorry, I, I swear I'm monitoring. Okay, 
Why is Floatplane Chat talking about NFTs? Do you guys want us to sell NFTs? Because I thought everyone hates NFTs. That's something that I find really confusing about the internet. Jake, do you find this confusing about the internet? How seemingly something can be universally hated and yet very successful? Okay, well, you see all the complaining about Halo Infinite skins? You play any Halo Infinite, Jake? I have played. Yeah, you've played some Halo Infinite? Okay, what percentage of the people who lobby up and go through that, you know that cringe animation? As though you're gonna like punch someone who's wearing armor. I mean, you, you kind of do, but, but the point is, you know that cringe animation that shows off your team so that you can get jelly about all their expensive armor? Okay, what percentage of people are wearing expensive armor in ranked? I might have accidentally bought a $20 set of armor. Shut up, you did not. <laughs> I accidentally. You're part of the problem. <laughs> it's a free game. You gotta support them a little bit. Yeah, Microsoft. Microsoft needs your support. We, yeah. got, we got Microsoft. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got I to gotta show you guys. This is my best Microsoft impression, okay? Jeez. I mean, they, 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 already, they already bake all their, all their data collection into their operating system. I can tell you right now, I will shamelessly pay not a single penny for Halo Infinite, no matter how much I enjoy it. In fact, I'm not even going to use any armor that I win. I am going to keep the bone stock gray Spartan armor until Microsoft pries it from my cold dead hands. Did we, is this a four terabyte Rocket 4 Plus? Is this new? I don't think it's, I think it's been out for a little bit, but yeah, it's a four oh, terabyte. Oh, sick. All right, so uh, in addition to our 12900K, which of course has fancy features like DDR5 support and DDR4 support, which by the way, I don't know if the video is out yet, but we did an investigation into DDR4 versus DDR5 performance. The difference ain't much, so. Uh, but it's got, perform it's got compatibility with DDR5. It also supports PCI Express Gen 5, which means that upcoming graphics cards are gonna be able to reach their full potential. You know, so we could be looking at as much as, you know, maybe two or 3% performance difference on a Gen 5 platform, if, I'm, uh, if, I'm, if my guess is anywhere near accurate. Um, but it's also got support for PCIe Gen 4 with four lanes wired up directly to the CPU here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our, whoops, well, it really helps if you actually put the new bit that you're planning to put onto your screwdriver onto it. So I'm just gonna, oh, I'm gonna try my overhead. Hey, look at that. Oh, wow, I was nowhere near center. Cool. So Andy at ease, soldier. Let's go ahead and pop this off. You should always check your motherboard manual to see which is the mostest optimalist M.2 slot for your SSD. If you're installing a Gen 3 SSD or something that's just going to be used as a game storage drive, I would strongly recommend that you use one of the, the secondary uh, one of the secondary M.2 slots. So for some of those, they might just be connected to the, uh, they might just be connected through the chipset or IO hub or whatever it is we call it these days, but they might be connected through the motherboard chipset rather than directly to the CPU, or they might run at Gen 3 rather than Gen 4 speeds. Whatever the difference is, I would recommend for a secondary drive that you use your secondary slots, but almost all modern platforms are going to have one slot that is kind of your your alpha spot so to speak your your primary what jake it is kind of an alpha spot it's your it's your main spot you know it's just interesting coming from a beta you know yeah 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 that whole alpha beta just just don't be a don't be a gamma or uh no no what's the new what's the new uh the new thing sigma sigma something Omicron? I, 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 don't, I don't remember. Let's go ahead and get this SSD installed anyway. It's PCIe Gen 4. Andy, come on, get a, come, come get a look at how SSDs are installed. These are Linus Tech Tips viewers. They've never seen this before. Okay, so it's PCIe Gen, <laughs> it's PCIe Gen 4, four terabytes of capacity. Sabrent's one of those companies that uh, I feel like I'm, uh, you know, I'm going off the script a little bit here because I'm sure they wouldn't appreciate me framing them this way, but where the heck did these guys come from? Am I right? Who the heck is Sabrin? Like, they came, they went from absolutely nobody and nothing to the next day, they're like, yeah, by the way, 
we've got like an eight terabyte SSD. We're the first to market on this. And we've got all this other stuff. And we're just like crushing it. And we've got all the reviews on Amazon and all the eggs on Newegg and all that stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. All right, let's go ahead and get this bad boy installed. Oh, did I take off the thermal? Yeah, I did. I took off the thermal pad covers. Uh, Dooley Lab says, Jake has a cat. Float plane chat, you guys never cease to amaze me how off topic you can get. Uh, for those of you asking, yes, we are repping the LTT merch today. This is just a hoodie that you probably haven't seen. It is our indoor hoodie. We actually had a lot of internal debate over what to call it, by the way. Uh, it was almost gamer hoodie uh, because the idea is that like it's warm enough to keep you from freezing your butt off when you're just sedentary, but not warm enough to like go outside in the cold. <laughs> so we were thinking gamer hoodie. Um, another option was, uh, oh, what were we going to call it? Yes. Now, this was Anthony's pitch, and he almost won the battle. I, I actually loved it. Uh, I got a little bit of pushback from one Nick Light, who thought that the name was a little bit random and confusing. But Anthony was like, hey, we should just name it like an engineer would name it. And I was like, what do you mean by that? He goes, we should call it the LTT Gamer Hoodie 3.2 Gen 2 by 2. <laughs> and then you went and called it the indoor hoodie. And then we called it the indoor hoodie. I, I know, I know. Anthony, Anthony was right. Hashtag Anthony was right. We definitely should have done that. Uh, that, that really did almost happen. All right, let's go ahead and get our RAM installed here. So we've got some Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB. Now, these are not the fastest on the market. In fact, I think Corsair just announced a either, was it 64 megatransfer per second or 6,600 megatransfer per second? Sorry, 6,400 or 6,600 megatransfer per second. They just announced what I think is the fastest DDR5 memory kit on the market. This ain't it. But the reality of it is that unless you get one of those hand-selected CPUs from Intel, I don't know if it's going to make any sense to buy the fastest memory kits on the market because this kit runs at 5,200 megatransfers per second, and we are already uh, at what is the limit of our 12900K. There are chips out there that'll do 6,000, or apparently if you know Corsair's validation of their kit is anything to go by even higher than that, but ours is not one of them. And to be clear, we could probably push this one higher if we go in and we start adjusting system agent voltages and stuff like that. But we're talking XMP. We're talking something that is supposed to be set and forget, not think about. It's supposed to be one click for just the average user. So uh, on. apparently the fastest one is G-Skill has a 6800 megahertz G-Skill has a 6800. And then G-Skill also holds the world record for the fastest memory speeds at what are the, 8704. What? <laughs> I don't think you can buy that. That's like they no, did an overclock. No, that would thing. be just G Skills, G Skills overclocking lab, uh, figuring labs. stuff like that out. I don't know how G Skill manages it. Just excellence, year after year after year. Back in the DDR3 days, we actually had an internal policy that for anything that actually needed to work, we used G Skill memory. So if it was like, okay, Nvidia just shipped this. Uh, is this the bin for this? It has a light bulb in it. Uh, I'm going to go with no. Is there a bin for this project? Oh, here it is. Cool. So NVIDIA ships us a GPU at the last second. We've got like three days to turn around a review. If anyone tried to use anything other than G-Skill memory on it, I'd be like, no. No, just stop. We actually need this thing to freaking work, so quit fooling around. All right, let's take a look at this case. And this is where the choose your own adventure part of this build starts to come into play here, guys, because we've got a lot of different options. What's cool about the O11 Dynamic Evo, here, hold on, I'm actually going to come around here. It's, it's for an aluminum case, it's, it's pretty heavy. It's got a lot of glass panels on it and stuff like that. So what's cool about this case is it can be reconfigured. So depending on whether your gaming setup is like this, right? So you got your monitor here, you got your tower over here or whether you prefer to have your tower on the other side, you can actually completely flip it around so that your motherboard and your window and everything is visible through this side. So I want you guys to tell me 
how do you want this thing configured? Are we going to go more conventional, or are we going to go upside down face motherboard, or, 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 or what? And if you guys decide on upside down, I guess, um, I guess I'm going to have to figure out how to do that. I have not looked at the manual, so hopefully it's very easy to do. Uh, QXC4 is saying upright GPU. OK, look, we're not talking about the GPU yet. We will talk about this GPU. This thing is absolutely sexerific. But we're not talking about that yet. Flip everything. Thanks, Dinner Beef. Uh, Black Abyss. Upside down. Inverted, inverted for sure. Invert, invert. OK, well, uh, that, was, that was very clear. Yes, flip every. OK, all right, 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 all right. Jeez. Could you <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen the internet so unanimously agree about anything ever. <laughs> um, well, we said this is the upside down PC build, so. I, I, OK, in fairness, that is, that is true. I have no idea how to invert it. I'm going to be honest with you. I was kind of hoping they'd just be like, you know what, Linus, do it however you want to do it. Uh, they did not. That's not how this went down. Oh, wow. That's a funky shaped fan filter. I kind of feel like I want to flip this thing over and have a look at why that exists. Oh. OK, it's heavy, and I really need to figure out how to get these panels off. Um, the glass panels, are you wondering? OK, this is actually not more clear. Oh, yeah, yes, it is. OK, cool. So this is a filter for the bottom air intake for the main chamber, which might not be the main chamber anymore because we're going to flip it around. But then this is actually, oh, hold on a second. It's not symmetrical because that's not what this means, but it's what does it mean if you can take something and go like that and it's the same? See, it's got this mounting nonsense here and here. It's mirrored, I guess? No, no, that's not mirrored. See? It's because it's not mirrored. This would be mirrored. Well, um, OK, we took this fan filter off. The struggle is about to be real here, guys. When do we ever go? Oh my gosh. Uh, hey, Andy, the panel came off. So that's cool. OK, we removed our glass panel. That's good progress. In the doc, there's notes about this. That there's notes about this. This new case yeah. has <sighs> better glass mounts. So you don't have to take the top panel off to slide them up. They just oh, are on pins. Oh, that's cool. I oh, love it. Right, were, were you on for that? Yeah. OK, cool. Jake's on top of it. He knows how to microphone. OK, what about the, oh, OK. Yeah, OK, so this is good because it's easier to use. But it's also a little scary because I didn't know this was going to pop off so easily. And this could have totally gone for a little, a little Linus, if you know what I mean. You can lock them down if they're like doing shit. Oh, you can too. OK, there's a screw in the top. So you can just, how do you guys both know so much about this case? Andy, it's almost like you're a big nerd enthusiast. Uh, I'm quite interested in this yeah, case. I know. <laughs> So Andy's been, Andy's been rethinking some of his life choices lately. <laughs> he's, been, he's been rethinking the whole small form factor or die approach that he's taken. Um, are, are you considering one of these? Yeah, I was considering it. Yeah. OK. Uh, here's this top little cosmetic strip. So here, you can give you guys a little look at that. Oh! Oh, that was bound to happen. OK, so here's our top little cosmetic strip. It kind of clips on like that. And then I don't know how it changes size. I guess that will become clear at some point in the future. Apparently, the, okay. the geometry you were talking about before is called rotational symmetry. Rotational symmetry. Um, OK, perfect. Hey, thank you so much. That's the great thing about our audience is no matter what obscure nerd thing I need to know, if I ask you guys while I'm live streaming, I will definitely get the answer. And it will almost always be a reasonably accurate answer. You guys are you guys are amazing. You're amazing, and I love you all. So, uh, but like in like a like a figurative sense, you know, I actually get kind of I get kind of offended when when like you know singers or whatever will say, you know, I love you, I love you, because they they don't they they some of them do. I think that they can be appreciative, but I don't think they actually like love every individual of the like, you know, thirty thousand people packed into an arena. I just, I just don't think they're saying they love their fans, not I love all of these. I don't think 30, anyone has that people. much love, Jake. 
I just, I don't have that much love to give for sure. I, I also subscribe to the love is a two-way street thing. Okay, what is this? Uh, oh, place manual, place. Okay, here we go. Hope you enjoy the journey of building your PC. Okay, Lee and Lee knows what's up with this case. Uh, remove the right, what is this? Oh no, okay. We've got some more documentation here. They just tell you to start doing stuff. They don't tell you what you're doing. See, it's just blank on the back. <laughs> the, the, remove the right side panel and top cover. Okay, remove the glass side panel. Remove the glass front panel. That's it. They just, okay, okay so that's how, to open, that's how to open it up. All right, manual. It's manual time, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we got all the languages here. Oh my God, this is just, oh. Oh, that's, wait, what? This is just the same. This is exactly the same page. This is just the first page of the manual. Is this a mistake? I'm looking at it, I'm trying to find a difference. Like maybe this was a revision that they threw in at the last second, but it really looks exactly the same to me. Uh, okay, cool. Come on, show me how to flip it around. Normal mode specifications, reverse mode specifications. Man, this case packs such a punch. So full ATX, obviously you could do wider than ATX because the motherboard tray just hangs over like this. So if you have one of those kind of sort of ATX standard motherboards, definitely not EATX, they need to stop using that terminology. But if you got one of those motherboards, it'll fit that. You could put up to two power supplies in it. You could put up to nine drives. So either nine SSDs, and I'm not talking M.2s, I'm talking like two and a half inch SSDs in the case. Uh, here you can see there's a ton of mounts for them on the back. They're like freaking everywhere. So you can put up to nine SSDs in here, or you can do three SSDs and up to, I think it's six hard drives. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, you can throw fans in the front. There's an optional mesh front panel. We don't have that one, unfortunately, but that's okay. I think I'll be installing enough fans as it is because you can put three in the top, three in the bottom, three here. I believe this can be three 140s or it might be two 140s or three 120s. Either way, we'll be doing 120s because we've got a triple 120 millimeter water cooler that we're going to be putting in. You missed a fan. I missed a fan. Oh yeah, the rear fan. <laughs> right, the classic. The classic rear fan. Uh, okay. So we got, we got specifications for normal mode and reverse mode. We've got a hardware list of everything that's supposed to be included. I'm just going to switch to my overhead here. Uh, here we go. We've got location of the I.O. module. We've got PSU installation. I don't actually see instructions for how to flip it around the other way. Remove top fan bracket. Oh. My gosh, okay, so you can put hard drives there. Thankfully, everything else looks pretty detailed. Graphics card anti seg Hopefully, this is just really self-explanatory because reverse mode installation. Okay, here we go. Let's follow some instructions, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to take a minute. We're going to be taking apart and rebuilding this case, courtesy of my LTT store screwdriver that you can't buy. So oh yeah, I guess I should switch to the other more different view. You guys are going to love this. Check this out. Check this out. Check out this gigantic stream deck we got going on for our two buttons. Handheld top down. It's a very, I, I realize this is a very champagne problem, but it was the only one we had, okay, for the stream cart here. We, we just, we got to make do with what we have. <laughs> stream deck mini probably would have been a little more appropriate. <laughs> All right. First step then, take off our fan filter, which I already did, haha. -ha. Remove the cable management bar. This is really cool. So it allows you to run all of your cables from your power supply, which will go here, sorry, this is a hard drive cage by the look of things. So from your power supply up to wherever it needs to go and then hide it all behind more drive mounts. So you've got a couple of two and a half inch drive, oh, there we go, drive mounting holes here. We're gonna, man, we're gonna need to keep track of this stuff. Okay, remove the hard drive cage cover. Oh, that makes sense. Obviously, we'd need to remove this hard drive cage in order to put a motherboard over on this. Oh, there you go, buddy. All right, cool. 
We're going to remove the hard drive. Oh, I should probably do some. Uh, I should probably do some merch messages or something. Let's see. How are y'all doing? Oh, we got some curated ones. Uh, Michael P says, "I opened my own computer retail and repair shop five years ago. Thanks for everything you do for the tech community. I wanted a WAN hoodie and a mouse pad, but I guess I'll just have to wait till they stock." Oh, sorry, sorry, Michael. Just got my framework laptop yesterday, says Kyle R. Thanks for helping me decide on a great laptop with great sustainability and repairability. Yeah, I mean, as much as as much as Dell's uh, what what is it? What do they call it? Concept Luna? Or something like that? Yeah, Concept Luna. As much as Concept Luna sounds li like a great thing, the more I look into it, the more I'm realizing that it appears to be just a, a, a PR move as opposed to any kind of actual effort today, uh, which is unfortunate. So I still maintain what I said on the WAN show about how even just maintaining positivity around right to repair and keeping the conversation going is a good thing. I, I'm not as convinced of, of Dell's intentions to really do anything about it. I mean, committing to making motherboards smaller by 2030, especially with the current trend in portable device motherboard sizes, it's kind of just like saying, hey, yeah, the, you know, man, what's, what's, another, what's another trend, Jake? It's like, you know, by 2030, we're going we're gonna to make more EVs. It's like, yeah, and? Because that's that's what people are buying. So hey, I uh, just wanted to mention. Yeah. Uh, I think you should buy me a framework laptop for work. Thanks. I should buy you a framework laptop for work. Don't you already? You're on. You're using Mac. Yeah. Well, you're I have a Mac a, guy. I need a Mac and a Windows. You need a Mac and a Windows. Well, then why don't you run Windows on your Mac? Because you have an Intel it's, Mac. It's Boom. Not, roasted. It's not the same. Boom. Roasted. I actually already do that as well. Exactly. Exactly. See, I knew that. I knew he did that. You know who just switched to iPhone? That guy. I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. I daily drove the 6S for, the six. man, a long time, actually. 6S was a great phone, Jake. You're was not wrong. Freaking I just... awesome. That was such a, uh, it was such a leap forward in terms of performance. Man, like, it was freaking amazing. Touch ID, where are you at? Yeah. Oh man, it had it had everything. It had the the 3D touch screen and all that cool stuff. Man, I loved that phone. It was awesome. All right, let's pull off the Oh, whoa, this is cool. Check this out, guys. So, on most cases, your case feet, right, are going to be like little screw-in things or whatever. Boom, the whole thing just comes off like that. Whoa. Cool, right? Can you fix your shirt tag? It's like hanging up. My shirt tag. On the top. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we it's go. It's courtesy of A-Prime. Thanks, uh, thanks, Alex P. Okay, remove the power supply. Oh, wait. Hold on. So is this, is this coming? Oh, phew. I love it when the instructions are super in order. Detach the feet frame from the chassis in bold. Oh, by the way, remove the I.O. module before you do that. <laughs> uh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Lee and Lee. Man, Lee and Lee has gone from like quality OEM manufacturer to absolute enthusiast hero. And I would love to know what happened over there in the last 10 years. Because back when I was buying them, I was actually the Lee and Lee buyer for NCIX. Back when I was buying them, man, I tell you, at least here in North America, they had no strategy, they had no presence really. Right, like you just had to, you had to just email your, uh, you had to email your rep who would be in, uh, I guess Taiwan presumably. So you had to email your rep and oh no way, wait, hold on, what is going on here? Oh, this is the front of the case. Uh, uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Power supply bracket. Yeah, these two. So you had to email your rep. They would basically give you this price list that had not even pictures on it. It was just an Excel sheet with their product numbering, which back then was just like Lee and Lee V1200B dash whatever. So you just, unless you were intimately familiar with every case in their lineup, you had no idea what you were looking at. And like Silverstone, because Lee and Lee is a, uh, like a low volume optimized manufacturer, they actually manufacture. They're not one of those brands that's just a brand. Um, 
I guess they just didn't feel the need to discontinue any products ever. So their product lineup would contain cases. And this is back in, you know, 2008, I guess, like 2007, 2008. Um, so they would have cases that still had like 80 millimeter fan mounts, which even back then was not acceptable. Like that was not current. It wasn't modern. You wanted 120 millimeter fans back then was the, the, the meta. Um, and so you could accidentally order just completely irrelevant products if you didn't know exactly what you were doing. They provided no guidance whatsoever. So, you know, you talk to a brand like a Corsair. Um, they're pretty good about helping you out. They're going to tell you things like, yeah, well, these are our main movers. So here's what I'd suggest for uh, like a, a mix for your pallet shipment or for your container shipment or whatever the case may be. Lee and Lee, no such luck. I'm like, hey, what are your top movers? They're like, ATX case. I go, like, I still remember that, man. I was like, yeah, I know. That's literally, OK, so you make computer cases. Thank you. I wouldn't have been in touch if I didn't know you make computer cases. Um, and the worst part was because they had no North American distribution, you had to order everything in containers. So if you're not familiar, uh, containerized orders are typically anywhere from 30 to 60 days of production another 20 to 60 days of uh, transport, and then you get them. So you could be at risk of Lee and Lee, because they give you no insight whatsoever, selling you 100 units of some case that while it's on the water, they end up releasing a replacement for that is like infinitely better because you didn't even realize this version of the case hasn't been updated in six years. Um, so it was, what I'm trying to say is that it was very stressful. It was stressful product managing Lee and Lee. And they have gone from just this niche, low volume optimized, like, man, the things they can do with aluminum. It's just incredible. They've gone from this niche manufacturer to figuring it out. They figured it out. They make enthusiast products now that are just, just outstanding. Uh, this one was a collaboration with, De oh, where's the, where'd the badge go? I thought there's supposed to be a badge on it that I says something about the Der Bauer collab. Is it, is it on here? It says on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. Well, I mean, I know that they've collaborated with Roman before. Roman's super smart, super smart guy, uh, huge enthusiast, like really cares, not just one of those people that's like, whoa, tech, isn't tech cool, guys? Yeah, don't um, talk about yourself like that. What? No, I, 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 I care. I freaking care, Jake. Man, the new house is going to be sick once we've got it all set up. I'm actually, I'm crazy excited about the setup that we have at the new house, man. Like... Like, what is there to not love about it? Jake and I were talking about, like, hey, should we, should we, okay. Wow, I'm about to, I'm about to disillusion a lot of you, I think. <laughs> Jake and I were having this conversation. We go, all right, how hard do we milk this thing? Because when you're doing a bunch of work to set something up, obviously, you want to get the most content out of it that you can, but without, you know, turning the content into, into just something repetitive and boring. And so Jake, were ha Jake and I were having a conversation where we were going for the land center at the new house. Do we build a bunch of machines, like set them up with the kids, maybe do a custom paint scheme for them so that they get to, uh, you, you know, wait, what is going on here? Holy crap. I think that was the whole thing. Oh, that's so cool. I think we're done. I think just these brackets. Yeah, it's reassembly time now. That was it to convert the case to reverse ATX. So look at this. It's, wait, no, that can't be it because we got to change. Oh, no, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, it's upside so down. So it's like that or it's like that. Like this or like this. Oh, that's so cool. Anyway, we had this conversation where we're like, okay, do we build a bunch of machines with the kids and do like a normal LAN center? Because we've, we've got it wired up for networking. We've got it wired up for power. Or do we just jump straight to, and then do we do a follow-up video where we do like a, a virtualized machine, kind of seven gamers, one CPU style with pass-through and optical cables to the mechanical room so that it's completely silent in there. No heat output from the computers, just like super silent, super comfortable, just focus on your gaming. And I was like, okay, the YouTuber in me says milk it, right? 
do the video setting up the LAN center, show off the LAN center, put some RGB on the walls, and, and like create this cool gamer space. Then do a separate video where we run the fiber optic cables and we set up the server and do GPU pass through and consolidate these five machines into a single machine that slides into the server rack. But I was just like, oh man, that's going to be so cool. I just, I just want to, I just want to cut straight to the chase. So. It's, it's, it's because I care, guys. It's because I care. Uh, merch message from Garrett D. Started watching you about a year ago. Can't get enough of your channels. Convinced my mom to get a framework and had a blast building it. Thank you for introducing me to it. That is so cool. So full disclosure, I'm invested in framework uh, in addition to buying the product. This is not a sample that they sent. They did send a sample, but it's not this one. I don't know who's using that one. Um, just love what they're trying to do. I don't know if they're going to succeed to be perfectly honest with you. I was talking to, bloody hell, who was I talking to? Um, Can I just mention it's been like 40 minutes and you haven't even put a motherboard it's in It's been yet? 40 minutes? Yeah. Oh, OK, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll build a computer at some point here. Uh, oh, wait, how do I install the power supply thing? Mm, mm, I get it. OK, so we're going to be reverse ATX, which is this, which means that we can install our power supply. Oh, wait, they want me to put the PSU in now? Oh, OK, well, I can do that. Um, anyway, I forget who I was talking to, but they were basically saying that investment firms are pretty much completely not interested in you anymore unless you have a recurring revenue model, right? So your software as a service, or you are um, the physical goods as a service, you know, someone like a Dollar Shave Club or Harry's or whatever else. And I'm, and I'm looking at it going, you know, that's really that's really tough because from a consumer standpoint, what I want to exist is things that I pay for one time and then belong to me, not things that I pay for over and over and over and over again. And I understand that that's the way the world's going. And I've talked about it a lot, right? Like even going back, man, how, how far back have I been saying this? I have no idea, but gaming as a, gaming as a service, I said, look, like it or not, this is happening. And I had a lot of you kind of call me an infidel, basically, a traitor, for saying that services like NVIDIA's GeForce Now were, were going to take a significant bite out of the market for uh, discrete graphics cards that people actually own in, in their own gaming rig, in their own house. Um, you, guys, you guys called me a heretic, essentially. Um, but I, I was right, guys. And it it's sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Because even for NVIDIA now, or you know, AMD if they had something equivalent, if I'm them, what do I want to do, right? Do I want to, do I want to sell you a GPU once that I get some fixed amount of money from just one time? Like if I make a GPU, right, what's the best use of it? I sell it to you once. Or I sell it over and over and over and over again. I sell it to a combined, you know, 46 people that can effectively timeshare that GPU and that they will continue to pay me for, for infinitely uh, because they don't actually own a GPU and they just have to, have to pay me for it forever, right? Like what's better, what's better for me? If I have one GPU that I can make, who do I send it to? Do I send it to my data center, or do I send it to a customer who pays for it only once? And I think the answer is just very, very obvious. OK, is this the power supply bracket? Now I've lost track of things, because I was telling a, telling a little story. Uh, help me out here, guys. So oh, oh, it's not quite the same. Trays interessant. We should just do a stream that's story time with Linus. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. OK, so this little power supply support bracket does not seem to go in on the other side. See, this, this screw spacing isn't right, whereas on this side, uh, it is. See that? That goes there. OK. Uh, oh, wow, I am so disorientimulated. I mean, it should be fine. It shouldn't really matter. So I'm just going to put these screws in here so we don't lose them. That's a big problem with builds like this, man, is you go, OK, I want inverted ATX today. And then two years later, you go, ah, you know what? Inverted ATX, who even needs it? 
Forget about it. Where did I put that little bracket I need to convert the thing? The good news about that little power supply bracket is that you don't really need it. Oh, wow, this is a tight fit. Hey, good job, Seasonic. This power supply just barely fits. They're not a sponsor of the video or anything like that today, but uh, there we go. Just, just quality products. Had a lot of y'all laughing about the uh, 1500 watt to 1000 watt uh, conversion of my home PC. The truth is that 1000 watt is actually gonna be more efficient, not just on paper, but actually more efficient in daily use because uh, or was it a 1500 or 1200? I can't remember, but you either way, having something, it. sorry? You had a 1500. I had a 1500. Before. Because being more over spec actually means that your computer will spend more of its time in a lower efficiency state for the power supply. So I had a lot of you speculating that I, I would have taken the Seasonic out immediately after we finished filming the video and put the Corsair back in. That is actually not the case. To be clear, that Corsair power supply, great power supply, nothing wrong with it. Very good power supply, and if you have one, you absolutely should not be replacing it anytime soon. Um, but I will actually get better efficiency out of running that 1000 watt than I would out of sticking with the Corsair. So I didn't make any changes, and Seasonic's one of those sponsors that is just, man, super easy to stand behind. Like, it's Seasonic. It's like, it's good. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to be like, oh no, is, is Seasonic gonna like, release a turd that is going to make me look bad. Um, they've been doing it since, I think they've been doing it since I was born, basically. All right, power supply is in. What's next? Install, please flip the chassis. Wait, please, if it's installing in the lower position, please flip the chassis and install the support bracket and fix the, Please flip the chassis and fix the PSU bracket. Now, hold on a second. What do you mean fix it? It doesn't go there. I swear to you guys, the spacing's not right. Wait, and it doesn't even, <gasps> oh, I get it. Okay, so on this side, it goes like this. And on this side, aha other holes. It goes like, oh gosh darn it, am I even going to be able to get that in there now? Aw oh, man! Um, can we force it? I might force it. Okay guys, I need, you, I need your guidance again. This is choose your own adventure PC building stream. Do I force it or do I take the power supply out and put it back in properly? Jake, you're going to have to let me know what the what the sentiment is. I will, but I'm going to give you my sentiment first. What I do you, you want? Should just stop reading the instructions. I think it's making you screw up. Stop reading the instructions. No, no, the instructions were helpful. I, I swear to you, they were helpful. I just uh, I kind of screwed up my instruction reading. Okay, what do they want me to do? I'm, I'm getting a general consensus of uh, forcing it. Force it, okay. And, oh, I, I got a few send it too. Send it, okay, it's in. There you go. And that, my friends, is what, oh no, I bent it. Okay. Well, someone said get a hammer. It's in there, but I don't think it really supports the power supply anymore. Can you see that, Andy? Yeah. Um, here, hold on. Let me get it screwed into place, and then we'll we'll bend it a little bit more, and then maybe it will okay. serve its original the, the purpose. The sentiment has changed to do it properly. Um, well, it's too late to do it properly now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your belated good advice. Really appreciate y'all. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm just gonna give it a little, ah, there we go. Oh, I might have scratched PSU a little bit. Oh, actually not bad. No, no I think we're good. Okay, yeah, you wanna bump our, uh, bump our exposure a little bit? Hey, there we go, that's not going anywhere. Freaking love it. Okay, what's next? Lower, oh my God, what is all this? What is this picture? See, step nine, you do this thing. Step 10, do the stuff. And then there's just this picture floating here with a ton of screws and a ton of stuff going on. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm looking at right now. So here's the, there's a cable, there's a cable management doodad here. 
So if we can find one of those somewhere. No, that doesn't seem to correspond to anything. Uh, OK, this seems to be this. And these brackets are maybe this. What do they want me to remove? Do they want me to take it? Oh, I think that they want me to take out this thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. OK, 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 OK. Right. Because if I don't, here we go, here we go. If I don't take out this thing, here, this, these three screws, then I'm going to have a heck of a time plugging in the modular interface for my power supply. And if I had a longer power supply, some, you can get some really chungus units like this long, then it wouldn't be able to fit. So this was guidance to help me navigate that. Then I can take this, which is something, and I can move it um, here. Ah, OK. I got this. No problem. Oh, got a couple more uh, merch messages coming in. Hope you all are enjoying the stream so far. Hope you all are having a wonderful Tuesday, if it's Tuesday, wherever in the world you happen to be. Might be. Yeah, it's Tuesday, man. Can't believe Christmas is coming up already. Oh, we recorded a sponsor spot for our January 1st, 2022 video today, and I was like, because when we record the sponsor spots, you, you got to fill out the date and the sponsor and whether it's like uh, the, the earlier short mention or the later longer mention. And I saw that 2022 in there. And I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it's happening already. Uh, Dimitri B says, Anthony was right. Should have named it Gamer Hoodie 2.0 with some like 2.1 optional features. Yeah, what a mess HDMI is right now. It is such a negative thing for consumers, man. When they when standards bodies are just like, yeah, you know what? Free pass. Go ahead and call your product whatever. Uh, I feel like the same thing really happened with VESA HDR. It started out as this really strong, uh, strong standard, right? Because uh, VESA HDR 1000, I believe, was the only one out of the gate. Jake, is that right? Then they added the. I have no idea. Uh, then they added the like perfect black ones, which I do think makes sense for displays that are um, self-emissive. And then they added display HDR 600 and 400. 400 nits is not bright enough. It's not bright enough. It's just not HDR at that point. Um, lower PSU installation. Peel the layer on adhesive. Wait, what? Adhesive, you say? Oh. Oh, there's totally like a whole instruction thing for, yep, there's a little. You put the bracket on the, wait, what? Install the PSU support bracket on the, oh no, this is the upper one, right. Okay, so this spacing, oh man, this is worse than I thought. This spacing is not quite right. It's not actually supporting the power supply, not because I bent it, but because there's a little adhesive thing that you're supposed to put on it. Whoops. Well. You guys knew what you were tuning into. This was never going to be anything but a train wreck. The good news is that I found the Lee and Lee Der Bauer collaboration badge. So I get to put this wherever I want now. I could be like, Lee and Lee and Der Bauer collaborated on all of this. Boom. Butt shot. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's asking, uh, because this case can support dual power supplies, how you would have that so both power supplies turn on when you turn on your computer. Oh, that's a good question. Let me just see if I can find the right little adhesive strip thing. Uh, rubber block for dual PSU. Oh, that's so cool. So it just, oh, this is hilarious. If you have two power supplies, you literally just put a rubber block on one of them to support the second one off the bracket so that they're not just hanging off the back of the chassis here. That's freaking hilarious. All right, where's my peel on the 
peel the layer on adhesive. Oh, I see where it goes. You know what, Jake? Jake, we're going for full completion here. Hi. We're going for full completion. So you might end up needing to tag out with someone because you might have to like, I don't know, eat or something at some point. I'm, I'm, I'm committed. You're committed? You're in it for, you're well, in just, it to win I it? I just want to have a German doner kebab, so. Here we go, all right. So this bad boy goes right here. And then while we're at it, let's just go ahead and put on the one for the regular non-inverted mount. There we go. So the case then is not quite symmetrical in any way, right? Because you've got this one that kind of, oh man, this is, this is a little challenging. Um, ooh, yeah, that's, oh man, if I, oh good, it's staying in place. Good, 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 good. good. All right, it's in, it's in. Okay, now that's wedged in there. That's a, that's a good solid support when you install it correctly. Look at that. Poor Lee and Lee engineers. They got to be looking at this going, oh, why? Well, they knew who they were dealing with. Y'all knew who you were tuning into. Y'all knew who you sent your case to. All right, two and a half inch SSD installation. Uh, we're not installing any two and a half inch SSDs, but man, let me tell you, SSDs have gotten to the point where even without hard drives, you can have a freaking ton of storage capacity in a case like this. Like, Jake, what's the capacity of those Keoxia drives that they're sending for the petabyte of flash project? Oh, uh, you put me on the spot here. I think they're 30 something. Those are two and a half inch SSDs. Like what? It's crazy. Like you could put literally hundreds of terabytes of SSD storage in a case like this now. Man, I still remember when SSDs were all you know, oh, if you're lucky, you can put your OS on it. All right, let's do the feet now. We need to figure out what we want to do with our IO module. So this is another choose your own adventure sort of phase. Uh, additional IO kit. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what this is exactly. Oh, fascinating. Oh, it's exactly what it sounds like. You can just add more I.O. to the case. That wasn't the only thing I thought. Ow! Oh, that hurt! And that, my friends, is why we painted them bright yellow. We actually had some people comment telling us how stupid it was that our weights were bright yellow. I guess um, we should have made them brighter yellow, apparently. Uh, that's why, though. It's to make it so that it's harder to walk into them. Now I feel like what I want to do is put some foam on them. So we've got our, we've got our vertical GPU kit, our upright GPU. Oh, I see it. Here it is. Uh, top I.O. kit. So what do you guys want? Do you want me to leave the regular bottom I.O. and then like add more? Or do you want me to go top I.O. and try and figure this thing out? Jake, you're going to have to monitor the, the consensus for me here. Wait, how is this? A, oh, oh, that's kind of cool. So, right, so we'll just take this module here, doesn't come with any cables or anything, and then, oh, cool, and then we just slot it into there. People are saying do top and then also put the extra I.O. Okay. You want top and additional I.O. This motherboard should have enough for it. Good right? Lord, you guys don't ask for much, do you? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, let's do, let's do, let's start with top I.O. then. Um... Okay, annual time. At this point, you guys are the architects of your own despair here because if you wanted this to go faster, you could just tell me, hey, build a computer, which as I've demonstrated, I can do in like 17 minutes. So we wouldn't, you wouldn't have to spend all day with me. <laughs> okay, package contents, installation. So we pull off our existing strip, which we already did a while back. Oh, right, okay. Okay, I'll tell you this much. It's a little disorienting having a case that is so kind of symmetrical. I had no idea right now. Am I looking at the front of it? Am I looking at the top, the bottom? Only the back is really easy to identify at a glance. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so top. So this bad boy is gonna go here. Okay, right, and it's inverted. Yeah, okay. Just keep having to double check. Doesn't seem like it should be. Doesn't seem like it should be inverted, but it's inverted. Does that does that go on there? 
It seems like it's supposed to, oh, oh, here we go. There's, do we have scissors handy? Anyone got any scissors? Okay, uh, Andy, don't shoot my keys. I don't feel like having people 3D print my keys from the internet. Okay, cool. Are you looking at my butt again? No, he's looking at your sweet indoor hoodie. Oh, oh my indoor hoodie. LTT score screwdriver. Ah. People want an update on the screwdriver in the backpack. Oh my God. Guys, I don't, I don't have an update on, okay, I do, I have updates. I, I actually do have updates. Okay, uh, let, me, let me figure this out and then I will give you an update on the screwdriver in the backpack because trust me, I want them a lot more than you guys do. Like I am, I am out so much of my investment, particularly on the screwdriver with zero return so far. I am, I am highly motivated for that screwdriver to come out. All right, you know what? Fine. While I'm while I'm taking this apart, I guess I'll I guess I'll just give you guys the scoop. So, what happened was the manufacturer that we had intended to use for the ratchet mechanism. Uh, so to create the assemblies where the uh, the the direction selector right here uh, and the shaft and the internal ratchet mechanism. So those assemblies, that manufacturer because of uh, US Chinese tariffs got bought. And the reason that that has to do with US Chinese tariffs is because that manufacturer was um, Taiwan based. And so a major tool manufacturer bought this Taiwan based uh, ratchet assembly company, and I'm sure they do other things as well, so that they could avoid paying <coughs> uh, import tariffs on their tools. Okay, sorry, this, I'm trying to do something while I'm talking, and it's making it so that the way I'm telling this story is really disjointed and slow. Give, give me a second, I actually do need to figure this out. How does this come off? It looks like there's a little tab here. Oh, okay. Well, that was easy. Okay. So the manufacturer we were going to use for the ratchets got bought and it got, they got bought by a major tool manufacturer because they were trying to avoid Chinese import tariffs. So they didn't tell us this immediately. In fact, they didn't tell us this for quite some time, which was extremely frustrating and unprofessional. Um, meaning that we spent a whole bunch of time sitting around going, okay, well, our, um, manufacturing has been delayed even though they promised us manufacturing time. Hey guys, what's going on? Oh, oh, COVID this or oh, power crisis that. And like, okay, fair enough. Those are big problems and I understand. But what you could have said was, hey, we're now owned by a competitor and your project's not a priority. And you could have told us that honestly before we even engaged with you because they would have already been at the point then of negotiating with this major tool manufacturer for the acquisition. Those things don't happen overnight. So basically we lost our ratchet manufacturer. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't lots of high quality ratchet manufacturers, but what it does mean is that we need to look elsewhere. So we are probably headed to China, but that doesn't mean that we're gonna get hit or realistically our US customers are gonna get hit with US tariffs and this is really cool because besides this assembly right here, so from here to about here internally, the overmolding and the final assembly of the driver, including this mechanism, is actually done here in Canada. So because the final assembly, like because a substantial portion of the final assembly will be done in Canada, it will be considered Canadian made. So as long as we can find a factory that can consistently produce our design, which is good. Uh, it was a collaboration with Megapro, who's a pretty well-known screwdriver brand. Uh, as long as we can find a factory that can reliably manufacture our design, I'm confident that the quality will still be good. And I, not good, I'm confident that it better be excellent. It better be nothing other than excellent. And then I'm also confident that we're gonna be able to have uh, competitive pricing because technically the driver will be manufactured in Canada. Um, so that's the, that's the story. Whoa. Okay. Here's my top panel. Um, let's see how this goes in here. Wait. Uh, huh. This is not how this works. Is there instructions for this? Um, I'm not, I'm not really monitoring chat here, so hopefully that made sense to everyone. 
Uh, I have a question. Yeah, cool. All right, Jake, what's up? Do you know what the largest single LTT store order ever was? I do not know what the largest single LTT store order was. I think on a WAN show a little while ago, we actually had someone order, it looked like, every item on the site. <laughs> um, but depending on what is or isn't in stock, that could affect uh, how large that order could be. Uh, why do you ask? I, I don't know. I was just thinking. Oh, okay. I was like, how much would somebody have to buy on LTT store for it to be reasonable for me to throw this pillow at you? Uh, oh. Uh, oh, I have no idea. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> pressure people into buying something they don't need. That's not really the philosophy of what we're trying to do. It's supposed to be just not merch. I, I kind of want to start talking about it as like unmerch, uh, because if you guys How about noticed, de merch. Yeah, we've actually more and more over time. Like you go back to some of the original T-shirt designs and original hoodies and stuff. Uh, we've gone from really, really strong branding, like really uh, Linus Tech Tips branding, to focusing more on LTT as a brand and making it less about you know, that Linus guy and more about just, hey, it's a good product that you might actually want to own. Uh, because the idea is that you can only sell so much you know, merch where people will give you the benefit of the doubt for a questionable design choice or a questionable quality choice. But that's not what we want to do. We want to try to reach just people who have no idea who I am and don't care because it's just a good, it's just a good water bottle or it's just a good uh, screwdriver. The screwdriver in particular is one that I kind of need to go mainstream because we bought so many units that if it doesn't go mainstream, I don't know how we'll get our investment back. So I just want people who need a good screwdriver to be like, oh, that looks like a good screwdriver. And I think we'll, I think we'll get there once we can finally deliver the thing. I will give you guys an update on Backpack in a minute here, but I'm just going to give you an update on the computer I'm actually building since that's sort of the theme of the stream. So there's this little housing, and it kind of reminds me of the little housings for desk-mounted uh, like card readers and stuff, like back in the early 2000s, where you could take the housing off of it and then mount it internally in like a three and a half inch drive bay. And so we take this housing off and then it looks like because it doesn't need to be protected anymore. It's not on the bottom of the case. It looks like I can take this I.O. module and I can just plunk. Yep, see it's got screw holes at the front there. I can just plunk it in a little something like this. And then, ah, okay, cool. So these aren't threaded, but that's fine because these are just uh, a little bit small. They're, they're small sized for the screws. And I'm gonna get, oh boy, hopefully, the screws for this. <gasps> oh no! Oh no, this was bound to happen. Um, yeah. Oh boy. This was bound to happen. Worst case scenario, I will steal them from something else, but I really, there they are. I really don't like doing that. Okay, so I'll take the two, two screws that came with it, and we're gonna go ahead and get that installed there. Super cool. Um, I should actually check if there's any other merge messages I should look at. Uh, Matt H, Linus talks in real life, and then I, I tried to, uh, I tried to glance read that, and I failed. Linus talks so slow in real life. I'm used to watching at 150% speed. It seems like he needs a nap. <laughs> now I could use a nap. I would be so down, man. I, I never napped until I hit about probably 16 or 17. Uh, before that, I was always like, uh, I'll wake up in the morning and that's it, I'm up for the day kind of character. But um, let me put it this way. In my final year at school, I was not a great student. I still got good grades because I'm not like, I didn't find school super challenging at that level. Uh, but I, man, I skipped so much class in grade 12. <laughs> Hopefully my kids never watch this because skipping school is not okay. I'm going to be honest. I only took four classes, so I was only there every second day. And then the other days, I probably was there maybe 60% of the time. Oh, I took lots of classes. I actually was, I, I was pretty responsible about my course load. I didn't take a single free block because the way that I saw it is I could either get the education for free or I could pay for it later. 
Um, and I, I actually am I'm so glad. Like, I took all my grade 12 sciences, um, grade 12 math, like everything that I... I too. Sorry? I only did that, though. I did physics, calculus, chemistry, and English. And honestly, some of the electives that I took in my senior years, or I, sorry, okay, in America, the whole, oh, I forget, like freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, I think is how it goes. Uh, we don't have that here. So uh, 12 and 11 and 12 are what we call your senior years uh, here. So yeah, in my senior years, I actually took some really good electives that um, changed my perspective on a lot of stuff. It was, it was, it was a really good thing. But so I took lots of courses, I got good grades, but I skipped so much school. And one of the things that I started skipping school to do was to just like take a nap. Cause I was just, I was tired, man. I was tired from staying up late playing video games. Um, I was tired from hanging out with my girlfriend at hours of the day that my parents couldn't supervise us because they were sleeping. <laughs> so I was just tired, man. And it's one of those things that has stuck with me. I, I just, I love, man, I love a good nap now. And it definitely doesn't get any better when you have kids. Because, that, man, just the schedule they run on, the speed that they run at, you just, you know, sometimes you just need a good little, you just need a good little nap. Okay. Can you still do a nat, like a sleeping stream on Twitch? Is that a thing? Sleeping streams on Twitch? I feel like I read something about those not being allowed anymore. This shouldn't surprise me, but it still does. I don't know why. Uh, I've got a bit of a problem, Jake. I um... Hit me. Oh, wait. No. No, no. This should work. Okay, why was I not able to do this before? Okay. I was having trouble sliding it into place. And I thought that I had to I had to put in the screws while the top panel was already installed, but it looks like I just I just derped a little bit and it, it does work this way. So let's go ahead and get this back in here. Man, having a strong magnet in your screwdriver makes such a big difference. Probably the biggest thing with the screwdriver and the magnet strength. So there's a couple of things that contribute to it. One is that we use an extremely strong magnet in here. Another is that we've got what we call shorty bits. So all the bits are these little shorty ones, and we'll have more. We'll have more available. They'll be very affordable. Like they're not going to be like a, a printer toner model type of thing. Um, but because you've got these shorty bits, you get this extremely strong magnetism uh, at the screw, and it does a couple of things. One, it makes it really easy to hold onto your screws. They're basically impossible to shake off. And two, you know that thing where you finish screwing something in, you pull the screwdriver off, and it leaves the bit behind? That hasn't happened a single time in the months that I've been using this. So I'm really excited about that because it's a personal pet peeve. It drives me absolutely crazy. Oh, this is not aligned properly. I pulled a, I pulled a dum dum move and I tightened this fully before putting, before threading in the other side a little bit. It also makes it so you can pick up screws easier. Yeah, it makes it way easier to just pick things up and get them repositioned. But you also don't drop them as much, so. Yeah. I, uh, man, I, I love this thing. I legitimately love it. Um, and I'm really glad because I didn't actually get a chance to use it before we had to commit to tens of thousands of units. So there was a lot of pressure on us to make sure that it was good. Oh, shoot. This is just, I am not getting this aligned properly. What's going on here, Linus? Come on. Come on, get this thing in here. Okay. It's just kind of, yeah, see, it's offset a little bit. So it's not. It's not in all the way. Ugh. Is that in? Can't tell. Ugh. I think it's in now. Yeah, it feels like the fit and finish was a little bit better before. Yeah, I take back what I said about the gamer hoodie not being that warm. It's definitely too warm for this, so I'm going to pop that off for a little bit here. I'm sweating. Okay. Whoa, can you get that shirt? Where, where can I get it? Yeah, where can you get the shirt? Actually, do we have the GPU design available still? I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure. I just wear it because I like it. I don't actually know if I'm, uh, I don't know if I'm pimping the right merch when I wear this one. My entire wardrobe is just LTT store anyway, obviously. So I don't, I don't think too much. I just, just put on whatever sort of looks good to me that morning. All right, let's get this repositioned. There we go. Now it's in. 
the tolerances are just pretty tight on this, which is a good thing because when you're trying to plug something into your front I.O., or top I.O. rather, I guess now, when you're trying to plug something into your I.O., you don't want there to be any play. You want it to have um, a nice, solid feel, and perhaps even more importantly, this is right on the top of your case, right? You don't want like a weird like gap on one side or anything like that. You want it to have a factory, factory look. And in order to do that, they have to have the tolerance, uh, tolerances on it extremely tight. And Lee and Lee did a good job there. I mean, that's what they do, right? They're a manufacturer. So don't expect slick marketing from them, but you can expect what they make to be good quality. All right, here we go. This is what was supposed to happen last time. Clickety-click, and it's in. Oh, balls. Uh, okay, well, there's two of them. Oh, shoot, there was one more. It's got to be around here somewhere. Uh, no, I'll read them. Just give me a sec. Oh, where'd that other screw go? Shoot. Oh, here it is. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, good. Yeah, I got it. Okay, merch messages. Norbert, will there be an iFixit bit adapter for the LTT screwdriver? Uh, that's a good question. It's not something that we had planned out of the gate, but I absolutely think that's something that we could do. There's, there's no reason we couldn't. Now, something to bear in mind is that even though our bits are shorter, they're still using just a completely standard, uh, crap, I always forget, is it 3 8 inch? Jake? Do you remember what the size of the standard yeah, thing in I North think America it's is? Quarter inch, pretty quarter sure. inch. What, whatever, whatever the standard screwdriver bit, uh, like hex head is. That's what we're using. So you could, if you had an adapter, then you could I absolutely it put it one. in it. What's that? They include one with their Pro Toolkits. And I fix it. Apparently, includes an adapter from this to their screwdriver bit. So yeah, you could absolutely use an I fix it bit if you really wanted to. Um, and because we're just using. The, the standard like holder for it, there's no reason that you couldn't take a standard bit and uh, a sawzall and just freaking shorten your bits. Uh, the other thing that you could do is if you don't want to get all 12, because that's what another reason we went with the shorty bits. So it was to increase the magnetism, make it super strong. And then the other reason was so that with the profile that we wanted for the handle, so that we could fit 12 bits inside in the little bit carousel here. And we just, we just couldn't do it with the hand shape that we wanted, with that really nice ergonomic feeling, um, and the full size bits. It just, we, we couldn't make it work. It made the whole thing like up to here or something like that. So the screwdriver just proportions were super weird. Um, but what we did, this was a bit of a later revision, is we created what we call the Ninja Star. So this one here is 3D printed in between the two layers. Uh, and then we did a mirror image of our bit clip. So these are both the same mold to save a little bit of cost. And we made it so that if you really want to, you can put a standard length bit, boop, right down the middle, and then you can just have six of them. So they're proprietary-ish. In fact, I believe you can get ones this length from like McMaster Car or whatever. It's just not really what everyone uses. So they're proprietary-ish, but there really was substantial thought given to how to make it not an impediment to enjoying the product and, and using it long term. We didn't want something where like, oh, you know, if Linus suddenly decides he doesn't want to be a screwdriver manufacturer anymore, now I cannot get bits for the screwdriver. We absolutely did not want to create that kind of situation. I think when I get one, I'm going to put long bits in there. I like long bits. If you like long bits, then you can absolutely go for it. And the long or the, the more powerful magnet will still be beneficial even with the longer bits. But I haven't tried it myself to see if it still has that, like, they will not accidentally slip out benefit. OK, now we managed to install the top I.O., but I haven't done the additional I.O. yet. So where is my package for that? Ah, here. Cool. Additional I.O. kit. We should double check our motherboard to make sure that we've actually got enough. Oh, I don't think we got it, Jake. I don't think we got it. OK, I'm going to try not to smoke my head on this thing on the way around this time. Where the devil did I put the mod? Oh, here it is. So our additional I.O. module gives us two more USB type A's and another USB type C. But unfortunately, while we do have enough headers for the type A's, we don't have enough for the second type C. There's only one 
Type-C header on this motherboard, and we've already got a Type-C port on the top I.O. Maybe Lee and Lee includes a little, like, stopper or something. Oh, yeah, they don't. That would be kind of nice, though, because for me, I get, I get triggered, okay, when I have case I.O. that is not connected internally. I do not like it. It bothers me a lot. In fact, Jake, do we have an internal card with, like, a Type-C header on it? Because like that would P make a PCIe card, you mean? Yeah, that would make my anxiety. I went as far as to buy an adapter because you my motherboard bought. didn't have the Type C style header. Well, yeah, you and I are, do, you and I are, 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 are kindred, kindred spirits, Jake. Um, but do we have something here? Uh, I'm gonna message the logistics okay. peeps. I don't think we do though. All right. So we'll go ahead and clip that on there. Really? Is that it? That's the whole thing. Oh, oh, where do we want it? Yeah, maybe not on the side. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. So we're inverted, which means, oh, wow, that would be on the opposite side of the computer. That would suck. Okay, uh, that was a mistake. Uh, but I could put it, I could make it my front I.O., though. What do you think? So now I have top and front? Okay, cool. Then Lee and Lee included a little cable management thing here. Uh, Kirsty M., this is my third bottle after buying a jumper and the Northern Lights desk pad and short circuit top. Love your products. Looking forward to women specific fits. Trust me, we are working on it, man. Um, I, okay, so this is a problem. I don't know exactly what her job title is, but Bridget, who is awesome. <laughs> so why don't we just say awesome person who works in the Creator Warehouse department. Uh, yeah, fashion designer. Well, that's the thing is she doesn't just do that though. She's not a fit technician. Um, she's just she's just great and does lots of things. So let's just say that. Um, so Bridget, it's a super big priority for her because you know obviously right now she can't like comfortably wear any of the stuff she designs and she designs it. So obviously she thinks a lot of it's pretty cool um, and would like to wear it. So that's absolutely something that is a priority for us. But she's also super smart when it comes to business stuff. And I don't really have to give, all of those guys are great actually. So whether it's, uh, whether it's Nick or whether it's Bridget or you know, Kyle and the rest of the engineers, uh, they're all pretty good about prioritizing their time. And so she understands from a business standpoint, it makes a lot of sense for us to focus on men's fits for now because according to Google anyway, um, males make up like 98% of our audience. But that doesn't mean that we don't want to do it because like I said, we don't want to just focus on selling to the audience anymore. That's lame. That's like, that's YouTuber merch. We want to take it to another level. We want to be a clothing brand. So um, absolutely, we're going to have different fits and there's going to be a lot of different fits. Um, we've talked about women specific cuts. Uh, I think I've talked a fair bit on WAN show anyway, but not necessarily on like a main channel video about how we want to do like thick boy and like lanky boy type fits. Um, we had so much positive feedback on the short circuit long sleeve, which had kind of super long arms. People were like, OMG, this is so great because nothing ever fits my super long arms. We were like, oh man, what an opportunity, right? Because if we're sourcing clothing from just, I mean, anywhere, right? We're not, we're not limited to whatever someone else makes for a printed t-shirt, then we can make anything we want. So yeah, one of our priorities going forward is going to be more inclusive fits. Um, so that means just all kinds of different body shapes and all that good stuff. But we are only just now going to start launching products with those custom t-shirts and hoodies. If everything goes well, then you're going to see a big push internally for that stuff. But we want to make sure that once we get these things out in the field, it's not a total disaster. So that's what the delay is right now. I think I am putting the bottom of the case on the right spot, but I do not know for certain. I'm pretty sure. I'm actually not even sure if I'm supposed to put the bottom of the case on. You're going to have to give me a minute here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Long fingerprint. Uh, Jacob B says, I'm an automotive mechanic by trade, and I'm super excited about the screwdriver. High quality tools make my life much easier, regardless of price I'll be buying one. Hey, thanks, Jacob. Really appreciate you. Um, we wanted something that was made for computer building, but that was robust enough to work on a car. 
And that's where the collaboration with Megapro came from. So those guys are well known, particularly in Germany, I think it is, right, Jake? Sorry? Oh, Megapro. Like they're not actually that big here in Canada, oh, ironically. Oh, I have no idea. I know yeah. that they sell them at Costco. Do they now? Yeah, the Megapro is like, I think Costco's a pretty big retailer for them. Oh, wow, okay. I I've think that's, seen them at Costco. I think that's a relatively new development, but that's super cool. Um, I've we, also heard of people, I know people that own Megapro screwdrivers that they bought from Costco. So we, so that's where the collaboration from Megapro came from. We wanted something that was proven when it came to the ratchet, when it came to the bit holder design, uh, but we wanted our own spin on it. And that's pun intended because Megapros are all the opposite way for the direction selector, which drives me absolutely crazy. So you turn it this way to screw in, and then you turn it so it's like righty loosey to, to come out. And I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't bear it. I was like, look, we want to work with you guys, but if you can't um, reverse the ratchet, that's not happening. I just, I just couldn't. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and that was not cheap, by the way, in case you guys are wondering. Getting the, the ratchet reversed. Nothing about it's been cheap. <laughs> okay. I think this is supposed to go on. Hello? Someone um, in the chat says that Snap-on uses Megapro as their OEM for the ra their ratcheting screwdriver. Snap-on uses Megapro? That doesn't seem right. Snap-on's been around forever. Surely they've got a... I uh, I don't know. In the chat? <laughs> I can't I can't speak to that. I don't know anything about that. Um, I do know that I loved the feel of my Snap-on ratchet for all those years. I know that I love the feel of the Mega Pro ratchet. I know that I wish that this panel was going on. Uh, I really cannot figure out why it won't slide forward. Okay, let's try again. Maybe this is just another case of me getting a little confused here. Oh. Um, oh wait. It's already forward? That's as far forward as it goes? Oh, yeah, that's as far, it's already in. Okay, cool. Where's my screws at here? Ah, oh, they're on the back. Okay. So now these bad boys are gonna go right here. Oh, wait, no, no, it isn't all the way in. All right, you little bastard. Am I missing something here? Motherboard installation. Okay, IO module location. Remove the IO module. SSD installation. Steps to uh, reverse mode. Remove the bottom fan bracket. Remove the top fan bracket. Okay. Install the cable clip. Well, they don't actually apparently want me to put the bottom panel back on just yet. So maybe I won't? Apparently there's a reason for the ratchet being backwards. Um, oh, I know what the reason for the ratchet being backwards is. I just don't like it. <laughs> and that's the thing about making your own product, is whatever someone else's reason was, you can be like, nope. <laughs> I believe the reason for the ratchet being backwards is so that you can't accidentally uh, turn it to reverse it while you are using the screwdriver. But if your handle ergonomics are better, you don't need to worry about that. I love Mega Pro, good guys. Um, but we felt that we could do the handle ergonomics better. Um, I am a little confused. I cannot get this to slide in. There it is. Cool. Neat. Uh, Ollie says, buying a very late Christmas gift from me to me. Got a case t-shirt, processor t-shirt, got a water bottle. Very nice. Thanks, LTT, for inspiring me, uh, me with home networking and server ideas. Second server using a 5900X for virtualized NAS. Very nice. Man, that's one of the most underappreciated things about AMD bringing multi-core to the desktop. Just being able to split those CPUs up and use them more efficiently. Super cool. Um, oh, and it's gone. I was going to read the rest of it, but Jake moved it. <laughs> it's no longer curated. It's gone. Oh. oh, I see. Yes. For those of you who are wondering what merch messages are, if you're tuning in a little bit later, Basically, we don't do super chats anymore because we don't really, A, feel like Google needs a cut from these messages. B, our super chats have been broken for a long time, so that was actually a big part of what inspired it. And D, uh, we feel like if you're you know, 
we don't always read them. We don't always get to them. So if we're maybe not going to be able to read them or get to them, then you should at least get something. So now, even if we don't read your message, you get an order from LTT Store. So you can send a merge message just by ordering something on LTT Store that you already needed. You don't just order more frivolous crap that you don't need. Um, but if you order something and then type in a little message, it'll either show up on stream or we'll, we'll talk about it or, or we'll completely ignore it and you'll just get your order. <laughs> well, look, I'm trying to be realistic, Jake. Um, I don't know if I want this cable management clip on this anymore. I think I might just want to do like, normal internal cable management for this. So I'm going to put this aside. Okay. I feel like we've kind of reversed it already, right? Does this look, does this look pretty reversed to y'all, ladies and gentlemen? We got our bottom I.O., we got our top I.O. all hooked up. I think it's time to put the motherboard in. Let's do it. Oh, okay. It only took an hour and a half. Look, Jake, if you, if you wanted to work for someone who gets builds done in a timely manner, you should have applied at Jay's two cents. Or NZXT Build. Yeah, NZXT Build. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're our sponsor for the video today. Maybe I should talk about them a little bit. Uh, give me a sec here. I want to get this motherboard maybe a little bit more secured, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. Um, what threading are these? I think Lean Lee uses M4. They do. Kind of thing that I shouldn't have to memorize because everyone should just use the same threading on their motherboard screws, but I can do it. I have that power to know these things. Okay. Usually I just don't think about it and guess, but Lee and Lee's very, um, very metric. So they're the kind of company that I would expect to use M4 on their motherboard standoffs and just avoid 632 except where they absolutely cannot, like on the power supply mount or hard drive mount. It's always kind of tickled me that PCs have both metric and imperial um, threads. Did you just say tickled? A standard, yeah, it tickles me. It means it like amuses you or like... Are you amused when you get tickled? Um, yeah, well, no. I wouldn't say that I'm amused when I'm being tickled. I actually don't really like being tickled very much. So, okay, that makes sense then. My parents used to, um, they had this, they had this game they used to play. And to be clear, uh, what I'm about to say is going to sound super abusive, but I really don't think it is. Um, <laughs> but they had this game that they used to play with, uh, mostly me, but us, uh, all the kids. Uh, where they would tell you um, to say, I'm such a weenie, okay? And if you didn't, they would tickle you until you, and effectively it's like an I yield, I yield. I yield. So you have to say, I'm such a weenie. And my take on this was, well, I cannot tell a lie to my parents. I consider myself to be not such a weenie. Um, so I'm afraid I can't say that. So we would end up in these like tickle matches. And this is like, I'm like 11, 12 at this point. So I'm not insignificantly strong, right? Like I can, like I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving boys. Uh, so it would take both of them to, to hold my arms and my legs and, and like tickle my ribs. Cause I'm, I'm hyper ticklish. Like I'm super ticklish. Uh, and they'd be like, all, and I'd be like, stop, stop, stop. And they'd be like, all you have to do to end this is say, I'm such a weenie. I'd be like, but I'm not. <laughs> okay. For realsies though, it was all in good fun, not child abuse. Um, <laughs> people are asking if you need to hug. If I need to hug. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's all good. Uh, what do we want to do next? We've got our motherboard in. Oh, I guess we probably need to do this, right? Now, I don't understand exactly what this is. I think I figured it out. I think it's probably something to do with, like, down here or something. You know what? I don't know what it is. Oh, maybe. Oh, is it, like, GPU mount related, maybe? You know what? I'm not going to try and figure it out. I don't care. I'm over it. Forget it, Andy. I want to have this thing though. Where is it? I appear to have confused myself and hurt myself in my confusion. Uh, there's something over here. Oh, right, I promised a backpack update. I'm gonna do that in a little bit. Oh, here it is. Wait, what? Why are there two of these? Ah, oh, balls, are these the same? 
somebody said that you can't install the AIO mount they are. when you have the power supply in. No AIO mount when you have the power supply in. Well, it depends on where we're putting our AIO. So why don't we figure that out, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, this can go in here. Okay, instructions. IO module location. Okay. Motherboard installation. Got this. Remove the dust filters. I think we did that a while ago. Uh, SSD and hard drive installation. Okay. Cable management. Uh, okay, we'll cable manage later. Oh, cool. They've got these little. Never mind. That's just um, Velcro ties. Okay. Radiator and cooling support. So, lots of options. 360 can go here, here, or I mean, we could put it in the bottom. Yeah, we could put it in the bottom as well. So this is another choose your own adventure moment, guys. Uh, while you guys are letting us know in the chat where you want the radiator to be installed, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unbox this puppy. Man, this thing is not freaking cheap. Um, one thing, oh man, one thing I wish the framework had is a touch screen. Actually, there's a couple things I wish the framework had, but a touch screen is definitely one of them. This is the H150i Elite LCD. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Did you feel like you needed the performance of an AIO with the price of a closed loop system? Well, Corsair has got you covered. Okay, just, just, just kidding. It does actually have some pretty cool features. So we need a triple radiator if we want to get the absolute most out of our 12900K um, from our experience. So we've gone with a triple, and this has all the bells and whistles. It comes Everyone's with- Everyone's same bottom. What's that? Everyone's same bottom. They want it in the bottom? Oh, that came out wrong. Um, bottom for worst airflow, they say. They, okay, hold on a second. Let me regain my train of thought here. Uh, okay, so it comes with a commander. I believe it's called the Commander Core, but it's one of their little RGB and fan hubs. It comes with an LCD for the freaking uh, block unit here. It's the RGB up the butt. It comes with their Maglev fans. Uh, hold on one second. Their new Maglev fans. Are they new ones? Yeah, it's a little, they just look a little different. Hold on, let me, let me, have, let me have a look here. Okay, so you got the screen on here. You got uh, their, yeah, here we go, new Maglev fans. And Maglev fans are one of those things that is not just marketing horse plop. These things are freaking cool because they actually magnetically levitate the blades over the frame, meaning that there is essentially no friction. Okay, there is the air. There's air. Um, but there's no friction, essentially, and they should last basically forever. Like Maglev bearings are super cool. So there's a lot of tech in here, a lot of high-end stuff. Uh, everyone wants the radiator in the bottom of the case. An intake on the bottom. An intake on the bottom? Guys, bottom I don't think that's the best way to go. But the fresh air, for, the fresh hot air for the 3090. Yeah, but the th yeah, no, guys, I don't think, I don't actually think that's a very good idea, you guys. Because we could easily, like we've got, Wait, let's maybe, think. maybe they're thinking the bottom is the top now that you flipped it upside down? Yeah, wait. Okay, so let, which bottom do you guys mean? Do you mean the original bottom or do you mean the new bottom? Because something to note about the new bottom is that it's not quite completely unrestricted, right? Like, look, it doesn't have mesh all the way over here. Whereas, okay, that's probably not going to make a difference, but, um, okay, I'm thinking. So if we draw fresh air in from the bottom, Okay, we've got a filter here, so it's going to be a little bit restricted, but that's not the end of the world. It's right on the bottom, so the odds of that filter getting all gunked up with cat hair and dust and stuff are much higher unless you actually regularly clean. So that's something to consider. you got to think about... That's one of the great things about building your own computer, is you build it for yourself. So you know yourself, right? If you're the kind of person who's not going to do maintenance, then build a lower maintenance machine, even if it costs you a little bit of performance, right? So it's gonna require more maintenance to have your, like your CPU cooler intakes right here potentially getting gunked up. Um, it means that all the air for all the other internal components are gonna be preheated by the CPU that could be consuming as much as like, you know, 130 watts while no, gaming. 250 or 250 watts. watts while you're doing something actually CPU intensive. Um, I don't know if I like it, you guys, because we've got other good options. We could go, actually, we can't go here because we want to do that vertical GPU mount. I saw a lot of, I saw a lot of discussion about the... Can you put the AIO or the upright. At, the, at the top if the GPU is like that? I'm actually not sure. So I feel like we need to figure out where we're going to mount our GPU first 
then we can have the conversation about where the AIO can go. Because I might end up stuck putting it in the bottom, whether I like it or not. The bottom kind of sucks too, because AIO pump. Yeah, so that's another good reason. I was going to touch on that, but then I forgot. Thank you, Jake. Uh, another reason we don't really want to put the AIO down here is because it means that our pump is going to be at the highest point in our loop. And no matter how pre-filled something is, no matter how, uh, here we go. No matter how non-porous Corsair's tubing is here, you are eventually going to get a little bit of air in your closed loop cooler. And it's not healthy for a pump to have air bubbles that are like stuck being pushed around in the impeller. And they can often get stuck in there. You can get like just, just these little air cavities that, that never move. And so it's better to have your pump at the lowest point in your loop. So like this, or like this, or like this. But like this is not really the best. It's not the end of the world. It's probably not going to kill it immediately. That's almost definitely not going to kill it immediately. It's probably going to have a negligible, if any, impact on performance. But it's not best. So if we can avoid it, then we should. All right. Let's talk GPU mounts. What do the people want, Jake? Tell me the will of the people. It's looking okay. like vertical Let's talk about GPU. Our options. Let's talk about our options, just, just in case. Okay, so hold on, let's, uh, this is great. This is great terminology. There's vertical GPU kit or upright GPU kit. Let's explain what that means, shall we? So our vertical GPU kit is gonna allow us to put our GPU here, like front and center, showcase, that kind of thing. Our upright GPU kit allows us to put our GPU here, which I think is everyone's saying upright. Pretty cool. I'm pretty into that. Andy, you want the upright one? I mean, it's just it's it's novel, right? It's different. Uh, okay, so let's do the upright one, which means we're going to go ahead. We're going to install the mounting kit for it now, and then I guess if I have to cable. Wow, that is a long. Uh, that's a long PCIe riser. Uh, it's got to be Gen 4, right? I hope it's Gen 4. I was going to actually ask you to check that for me, producer. I just, I like that this is something different. Ah! Well, that's good. If it's Gen 3, it's not the end of the world. The difference between Gen 3 and Gen 4 for performance on a modern GPU is negligible. But it does mean that you might end up with a, a no output situation if you don't go into the BIOS and configure your slot to run in Gen 3 mode. Because if you try to run it in Gen 4 mode and you have too much signal loss over your riser, then it can just cause issues rather than um, if you tell it, okay, because it, it won't auto negotiate. It's not like, a, like an RJ45 like Ethernet connection. Uh, so you have to tell it, okay, run in Gen 3 mode so that we don't have any, any issues. Oh boy, this is, this is something. So you can do up to a triple GPU. Like a triple wide, not, not three GPUs. You do up to a triple wide GPU. They include some cable management, like cable ties, some little corner braces, lots of corner braces, and then this ridiculously long PCIe riser cable. It is Gen 4. It is Gen 4. Well, it better be. Good guy, Lee and Lee. Yeah, how much does this thing cost? I bet it's like 150 bucks. How much is this kit? All right, cool. Ooh, Gen 4 risers are not cheap. Like, let me tell you, it drives up the price of your motherboard just having Gen 4 slots go from here to here, okay? That should give you some idea, like, what grade of components is required to do Gen 4 speeds over this kind of a distance. Okay, package contents. One of these, one of these, one of these. Yep, I think we got all that stuff. Remove the side fan bracket. The side fan bracket. I can't find the exact listing, but the version for oh. the O11 Dynamic XL yeah. is around 100 bucks for the Gen 4 one. 100 US? Yeah, 130 okay. Canadian. So uh, 130 CAD, so I was a little off, but not actually, actually not that much. Interesting. Well, we're going to solve a mystery here, you guys. When this fan bracket comes off, wait, which ones are involved in removing this fan bracket? Hmm, hold on a second. Okay, this laptop needs to come down for sure. And then let's go have a quick boo at this without hitting my head again. 
Um, do all of these need to come off? I really hope not. Yeah, that last screw I took off was not for this. So it looks like it's just a couple there. Uh, interesting. Oh boy. Oh, I'll figure it out. I totally almost hit that again. Okay. It's true. Oh no. I'm making a little bit of a mess of this build. Uh, oh wow, I have no idea which way this was in. I'm just gonna hope for the best here. And then if that doesn't make sense later, then I will, oh yeah, no, I've got it right. Okay, so I just removed some other little thing there. And now I need to, wait, what? Is this, this isn't, it's not toolless or something, is it? See the way it's moving like that? Okay, do they show you how to remove it? <laughs> remove the side fan bracket. Oh, hold on, they do totally show you how to remove it. Push. Push what, smart guy? Everyone's saying just slide it off. Just slide it off, eh? Is it just like a... <laughs> I swear to you guys, this is not that obvious. Slide it, you say. Like I see, I see where it's supposed to kind of move, you know? There's these kind of little weird things here. Is this a... Oh. Wait, was it? Remember, it's oh. inverted from oh, where it was. Oh, it's inverted. Okay. <laughs> All right, I think we got this figured out. There's a little release here. Okay. There we go. Okay, cool. So that's out now. Goodbye. And then we figured out what the mystery bracket was. Here we go. Mystery bracket. Dun, 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 dun. This goes. Ah, shoot. I should have paid attention to the orientation. Uh huh. Well, I'm sure it'll be in the pictures. Remove the thing, ah, uh, yes. Oh my God, what is the orientation of this thing right now? I am so, uh. Just remember, okay, old so bottom like is new top. This, the, uh, this way, <laughs> okay. You know what, okay, for all the increased difficulty of this build, I'm definitely having fun. It's definitely, it's something different, it's something new, you know? It's a huge problem for a lot of people. You buy a computer case and it's just not the correct orientation for your desk. Yeah, and no, you, totally. Sometimes you can't reorient your desk. And the stupidest part is like for me, the first time I bought an expensive case was an Antec Landboy. And okay, that's not a very expensive case maybe by today's standards. But for me, that was a lot of money. And it was an aluminum case and my intention was that, okay, I've treated myself to an aluminum case, like a quality case from a good brand. Uh, Antec was like king back then. I'm not gonna need to buy a new case because the ATX standard isn't going anywhere, which it didn't. And uh, this will have all the cooling I could need. It's the Landboy. Okay, that was, that was not correct. It had like 80 millimeter fan mounts and stuff. Um, but the point is that to me, a case is one of those things that's kind of like a monitor. Like as an enthusiast, I would upgrade my internals far more often than I would upgrade things like cases, peripherals, and, and monitors. So having a case that you know it can be with you for a lot of internal upgrades is really important to me. And so something like, you know, even if I change my desk, knowing that my case is still gonna be able to be oriented correctly if I'm willing to put a couple of hours into converting it, <laughs> you know, finding all the little bits and doodads that are required is a really good thing. Okay, so the mount accessory is there now. And we, uh, what is this? Is this just showing how to do it? Oh, insulation for GPU mount at the first slot. Insulation for GPU mount at the second slot, including for water cool. Oh, I understand. Okay, so this determines where this is gonna go. Okay, depending on whether we want, ba -ba 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 -ba, here we go, whether we want it in this slot. So this is the first slot, okay? So, ugh, hold on, yeah, let's get oriented here. There. So whether we want it like that 
or whether we want to pull it more forward in the case. So back or forward. And I think for a water blocked installation, they are recommending the second slot. Uh, for us, this is a double wide GPU in terms of the, the actual I.O. here, but it's triple wide in terms of the cooler. So I think we could go either way. But if they say air cooling first slot, I think I'm just going to go for that just to make sure we don't have any clearance issues or anything. It'll probably help with the AIO too. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. Okay. Ooh. Do not want to drop this. This is a fancy 3090. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about this when we're, when we're putting it in. Okay. Oh my goodness, these brackets though. So for first slot, I need... <laughs> This bracket, I need, uh-huh, this bracket, okay, I need this little, um, I need this little rubber pad, just one of them apparently, okay, little rubber pad, and then I need screw E, which is an M4, all right, cool, <laughs> how does this all, <laughs> wait, that's right. it? This whole... That's the whole instructions? I think you need to uh, invert where the bracket goes as well because oh, the case is inverted. Hold on. Invert it? No, 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 no. The bracket's symmetrical. I think we're good. I think we're good on that. But what about the radiator? Mm, don't worry. You, you know what, Jake? You might be right, but I just cannot. I cannot right now. I'm going to follow the instructions, and I'm going to try, and I'm going to see what happens. And then if, it, if we need to adapt, we adapt. Two hours later. Yeah, we're adapters, Jake. We're adapters. <laughs> okay, so let's put this here. <laughs> I'm an adapter kind of, oh, crap. Um, are these both threaded? Oh, crap. Both these holes are threaded. Okay, that's problematic. I hate it when they do that. That really doesn't happen very often on um, reasonably well thought out products like this one. Well, it's true. You can't have two things that are both threaded that go together. You gotta have one that's not threaded, Jake. I'm not wrong. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay. So that's on there like that. That's, yeah, that's good enough. And uh, this little uh, rubber pad so this is, yeah, first slot. Okay. And then this little rubber pad here. Andy, how you doing? Doing great. Okay, good. You liking the lighter camera? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, crap. Ah! People in the audience like the camera, too. I've seen, like, probably at least 10 people say, wow, the stream looks so good. Yeah, so we're shooting on the FX6 right now. Uh, we're, we've been really happy with these Sony cameras. All right. So it is height adjustable according to the GPU length and power connector position. So you need to measure the width of your graphics card, and then depending on the measurement, they have suggested mounting holes. Jake, we got a, we got a, a tape measure? No, I say you YOLO it. You, YOLO it? Um, OK, sure. Mm-hmm. So there's rails there. And then, wait, they want us to remove the tray. Well, bloody hell, why'd they tell us to put the tray in in the first place? Step one, install the tray. Step two, take it out. <laughs> no, I'm serious right now. They have you take it out. Um, okay. Oh my goodness. This looks ridiculous. I don't even know if this thing is going to fit on our GPU, by the way. I think our GPU might be too thick for this support bracket. This is going to get real hairy real fast here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, all right, let's put that there. So this bad boy needs to go... Wait. What? What are you talking about? adjustable according to the so where does this go okay help me out here where does this go the GPU is going to be oriented IO down wait yeah how the hell do we get at the IO okay just a second here where's my IO extensions 
this doesn't seem like a very good idea. Do they even talk about this? GPU output cable routing. Oh my gosh. You go through here. Oh, okay, I guess that kind of works. Okay. I don't know, guys. I don't know if I like it. Make sure the tray are slide back properly. I, oh man. Adjust to hold the GPU perfectly and tighten the screw. The bracket can also be installed in reverse when using a thinner card. I think you just go for it. Oh. Remove the graphics card mounting tray. Okay. So the IO is at the top? <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm trying right now. I'm trying. Reverse mode, IO goes down. Fine. Screw it. We can't get it that wrong, right? Right? Uh, right. Right. Okay. So that, we're just, I, we're giving up. And by giving up, I mean we're going for it. Mm, I'm going to guess 632 on these. Yeah, I think these are probably 632. Uh, yeah. Let's do one of those. A little something like that. Why do you guys always choose the path of most resistance? We've got a quite a few merch messages. Yeah, I'll have, a, I'll have a look at the merch message in, in a second. I've been, I've needed my full brain power for figuring out this <laughs> GPU mount. Uh, okay, uh, Yop D says, is the pink beanie a not out yet or a sold out? Uh, I didn't know I needed it before I saw it, but now I need it. I'm sorry, it is a sold out. It is a limited edition product that didn't even make it past the first like two minutes after I announced it on WAN Show. So, unfortunately, we, you know, we can't say, hey, look, this is limited edition and then turn around and release more of them. That's not how we roll. If we say it's limited edition, guys, it's limited edition. So we, we, we went for it and uh, we can't bring it back now. Okay. What the heck is this supposed to screw into? What in the Sam Hill is going on here? Is upside down Tetris difficult or what? Oh wait, hold on. Yeah, it is upside down. Thank you for saying those words, even though that wasn't what you meant. Uh, Are you telling me you have to put it at the bottom? What? No, 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 no. The the bottom is good because that's where the I/O routing is. So this is this is a good thing. Okay, so that goes there, right? Yes. That looks cool. That's so cool, right? Yeah. I don't know if it's worth all this effort and another hundred dollars on top of the cost of your case, but it's definitely cool. All right, where's my screws here? So this this top thing, are you gonna tell me what screws to, whatever, I'm just gonna go for it, who cares? Okay, I'm gonna use these ones. I'm gonna use the, got it? I'm gonna use these 632 countersunk screws. That's what I suspect is right. Can I even, wait, what? Ah, darn it. Okay, we're doing things a little out of order here. We gotta slide these off. No, no, this is relatively painless as long as I can get this thing back on this time. Okay, eh, come on. Now I can't get it off? Are you even, are you even serious right now? Okay, there. So I'll put that there. And then this, I suspect, is correct because this looks like a countersunk screw hole. Is that gonna go? Is it a goer? It's a goer. All right, awesome. And I need you, and I need you, and I need you to wait there. Okay, one thing that I'm noticing about this GPU mount is that that support bracket is pretty important. GPU sag, like towards the, the well, down, like down towards the ground right now, is very real, because it's only held in by these four screws here at the very bottom. When it's upright, I don't think that's going to be a big problem. But when you're manipulating your case, just like moving it around because you want to work on something else, uh, you're going to have to consider the kind of strain that you're putting on your, your GPU. Okay, there we go. Let's... That went in a little bit easier that time. Oh, okay. Whew. That's, that's exciting. Now I can see why they wanted me to pre-install... Mm-hmm. I can see why they wanted me to pre-install this 
but the issue is that I just don't think this thing is going to work for me. Like it's supposed to clamp onto your GPU like this, I guess. Wait, that can't be right because it's pushing it out so far. Uh huh. Well, let's have another look here. So there's supposed to be another piece of the bracket that like clamps onto the GPU. Okay, so a little something like these pictures are not amazing. Uh, uh, here. Yeah, like that. So this guy is supposed to be slidey, slidey. Now, wait a minute. For GPU mount at second slot. Uh, did I totally install this wrong? Oh my gosh, I totally did. Oh, that's fine because I installed it extra wrong. So first I put it in the wrong orientation. Then I put the pad on the wrong side, which means that when I put it in the right orientation, the pad will be on the right side. I did it on purpose. I just wanted to show you guys how this is an easy mistake to make. You know what I probably did is I probably realized it had that threading issue and then I probably like grabbed the instructions quickly again and looked at it again and looked at the other one because I had it installed for the second slot. Should you just put the instructions upside down and read them backwards? I, yeah, I, I would like to think that that's a good solution, but I don't. <laughs> I wish, Jake, I wish. I think that causes more problems than it solves, though. Here we go. The good news is now I think that we can accommodate this triple slot card. So this is going to go... Uh, okay, here we go. All right, cool. Now we can eyeball where we want this to be. So I want this to go kind of here. And then, yeah, there we go. So now the second bracket is going to go a little something like this, and then is going to clamp our GPU and give it the clamps. So I'm thinking like right there, does that look good? I'm thinking right there. Because I don't want this thing going anywhere. And once that's in place, I think we should be good. Now, I would actually kind of like it if they gave you another set of rails so that you could mount this on the other side. Because a lot of cards have like branding and stuff on the top, or they might have a contoured cooler shroud or whatever the case may be, and it actually doesn't really clamp on there very well. And if I could pick exactly where to clamp it, I would actually want it on like the heat sink, or I'd want it sitting here. Uh, I guess I do not get to pick that though, so. Should you run the riser first? Uh, oh, I'm I gotta take the card out. Because I, I didn't measure the card, so I didn't know where I was supposed to mount this. But now I do. Oh, you know what? Actually, oh man, I can totally put this in now without taking the card out. Uh, and no, I don't have to run the riser first, and I'll show you why. It's actually a pretty clever design. Okay, um, so that's gonna go. That's gonna go right there. Now I have to figure out if I can rotate this case while using pressure against the GPU to hold my bracket in place. Yes, I can. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah, okay. Oh, we got this. I just need these screws, all right? And I just need to put them into, oh. So here, I'm just gonna yeah, reposition this bracket just a smidge here. Uh, okay, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I got this. Ah. Oh, I missed. Okay, repositioning. So here, I can show you what I'm trying to do here, Andy. I got the bracket. Actually, you know what? Oh, oh, I can totally hold the bracket. Okay, I got this, I got this. So that goes there. Right? I mean, it seems right. Is that, is that not going in? Why would that not go in? Everything seems like it should be okay. Ah, uh, oh, balls. Are you supposed to screw it in from the back? Yeah, you totally are. Insert the support frame on the, wait, on the hard drive tray. Oh, yeah, this is a hard drive thing. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that those screws are supposed to go in. Are these holes just a little rough? Let's find out. That, 
the GPU right now. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Oh. I know. Look, I don't like it any more than you do, Jake. Uh. Don't worry, we got this. Uh. I'm putting the support bracket on uh. now. Right now as we speak. I am installing a support bracket for it, okay? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, shoot. Oh, wow, this support <laughs> bracket is weak. It's not sag, it's, it's wobble. Like, um, all right. Here we go. Oh, sorry, sorry, everyone. Look, I mean, whatever. It's just a 3090, right? Okay. <laughs> Look, I'm just teasing you guys. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. So it's a big deal. I just need to get this in. Come on. You just don't exactly have the best track record with Look, this sort of thing. Look, I things. have an excellent... How many 3090s have I dropped? Zero. How many $10,000 CPUs that have you dropped? That one only. And that 3090 that I did drop, I think some of you are going to point out that I did drop a 3090 <laughs> or a 3080, that one was a dummy. That was not a real GPU. It was always a dummy. It never worked at any point. It was just sent to us for like a, a marketing video at launch. That's um, what they, they all say. No, it's true. That's true and you know it. He's lying. You know it. Hashtag lie You actually know that what I'm saying is true. No, it's wrong. You're... Ow! Fudge. This hurts a lot. <laughs> You're being the worst kind of conspiracy theorist. It's, be, it's a dummy because you already dropped the it. The kind that knows the truth it's and a, still continues to, the fact. to mislead the people. Because you broke it. Okay. The tolerances are just a little bit funky on this little support bracket thing. So we'll get, we'll get it in there. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to get rid of that GPU... Um, waver uh, very quickly here i have one extra screw which is surprising oh no i know what it's for it's an extra screw for this in case you had a triple slot backplate so that goes there and then now i have used all the screws which gives me confidence that this is actually installed correctly and my last little pad so let's have a look at this that's pretty clever i like it no, look, I'm working on it. Jeez. Can I come, like, hold it for you? <laughs> no, no, don't worry. We got this, Jake. We got this. We got this. Da -da 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 -da. Okay. So this goes here. Oh, yeah. Just watch this. It's going to be rock solid. Rock freaking solid. Well, it's sort of solid. It's like sponge solid. Uh, that's okay. It's all right. <laughs> it's dead. Well, no, I don't have any other better ideas. Actually, I do have better ideas. Uh, NVIDIA's reference cooler used to have um, screw mounts on the back, so that would be pretty cool, but then obviously you have to design specifically for NVIDIA's reference cooler, whereas this has broad compatibility. This is really good. You know, I keep telling the inventory guys, don't put uh, asset tags on the PCI bracket because sometimes those don't stay with the card. Um, uh, well, maybe I'll move it. No, I'll move it now. You got to put asset tags on the board because that's the only thing that can never be removed. I mean, well, depends who you ask. There's some extreme overclockers that it. there's extreme overclockers that will actually saw off the back of a graphics card to put their own power delivery on it and stuff like that. But most people would never do that. Okay. Apparently, you can just build the whole computer and then flip it upside down after the fact. You can build it and flip it later? That doesn't seem right. Not with the upright GPU mount. No, I don't think you could do that. Because the upright GPU mount requires you to... Oh, wait, maybe you're right. Okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure anymore. Oops. Also, the, the For the Win 3, that graphics card, comes with a metal bracket for attaching the end to things. It comes with a bracket to attach the end to stuff? I don't think we have the box, so maybe the bracket. Oh, that'd be super cool. Yeah, that would be a better way to mount it as well, just like bolt it to here. I mean, this is acceptable, though. It's acceptable. Okay. Yeah, it's not going anywhere. Let's have a look at our radiator options now. We actually could put it here. Let's grab one of our fan. Nope, that's not it. Where is it? Oh, my goodness. I'm getting... Oh. A little disoriented here. 
There we go. So we got one of these bad boys. This goes a little something like this. Oh, uh, like this? I think so. Yeah, like that. Cool. So that would put our fans right here, which means that we actually could do a bottom mounted radiator if we really wanted to. I don't really want to. I would like to do a bottom intake, bringing nice fresh air into the system, uh, specifically for our GPU right here, and obviously everything else. And then I would actually like to have a top exhaust, and I'd like to put my radiator there. So if it's all the same to you guys, that's what we're going to do. Meanwhile, chat, actually, it's not the same to us. That's nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just think that's how we're going to do it. And we do have enough clearance for that. You can see here, actually not even by much. This is a gigantic graphics card. We've got like this much clearance between our radiator and the top of that GPU. I love it. And in terms of AIO mounting, hmm, do we go this way? It kind of interferes with the RAM a little bit. Like it crosses it and it looks kind of stupid. How about this way? We want to go that way? Yeah. I kind of feel like that's pretty good, right? Yeah, I like it. Let's do that. Cool. Uh, it should, yeah, it should. So fans go this way. We go get our fan bracket. Man, there's a lot of RGB to wire up here. I love this. Corsair has come full circle and they've gone square. They now have totally square fan brackets so that when you install them on a radiator, you don't end up with air leakage around your stupid non-industry standard shaped fan frame. That used to drive me crazy when they would ship their, their old SP fans with their AIO kits. And I'm looking at it going, you know you can improve the performance of your cooler by like a degree or two. I believe I did a video about it way back in the day. By a degree or two, by taking like duct tape and sealing all those stupid holes. Like, what are you doing? Aren't you performance oriented as a company? And it took them a very long time, but they eventually saw the error of their ways and did it my way. Do you remember how many of those old fans we had and the, the color rings? Yeah, the, the, those old color rings. The oh, color we rings were such a flex, like all of the, the rich people with their fancy builds had the specific colored rings to match their rig. We had so many of those. Thank you, you know, that's one good thing about RGB is now, you know, if you do want to have a color scheme, you don't have to buy different components to have it. Cause that was, that was terrible. That was super dumb. All right, let's go ahead and I'm just going to get the CPU block mounted here. It looks like the H150i Elite LCD has not yet been updated. At least the one we, oh no, it has. Oh, look at that, okay. So you've got LGA 1700 compatibility right out of the box uh, for 12th gen Alder Lake. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our, I guess this has like just a wider range of motion. Cool. And we're gonna pop this on. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, balls. Our power supply is there. Hmm. Um, I feel like I said this earlier. Look. This is a pretty unconventional case, okay? What could go wrong? Let's put this here. I think I can be forgiven for making a couple small understandable mistakes. Let's see if we can just get this in there. The chat is like, we tried to warn him. Yeah, you guys, you guys tried. I appreciate y'all. Um, um, um. Yeah, this is too risky. If it was anywhere else, I would just kind of force it in there. But it is not. It is right against the back of the motherboard PCB. So if I just try to force that in there and I scratch a trace on the back of the board, bye bye board. See you later. There we go. Oop. All right. So we'll pop that. No. Wait, what? You got to be kidding me. Either the board or the case has sort of a weird, unusual. Oh, I think it's the board. The CPU socket is farther that way than normal. I can't get this in. 
Are you kidding me right now? No. Oh, no. I have to take the whole stupid board out? Well, not the whole board. As long as I as long as I loosen it a little bit, I can probably I can probably flex it in there. Don't worry, Andy, I'll, I'll be back there in a sec. Is this what is this what is this doing? There we go. Okay. Uh, we're gonna loosen it enough to, to kind of squeeze this in there. I think we should just go get the Dremel. The Dremel? Yeah, because that's what this build needs. It needs metal shards everywhere. Especially right on the motherboard. Yep, that's, that's what it needs. Okay, so we're gonna push the board. Look, this is your fault. You put the motherboard in upside down. A little bit of pressure. Oh, hold on. Okay, crap. That's not what I want. Okay, good, that's in. Okay, now we just need to apply a little bit of, okay, it's really, I don't have much of an angle here. Okay, just a little, you might feel a little pinch. <laughs> little motherboard. Ah, there we go. And then I'm just gonna use the LGA 1200 mounting holes here. Uh, just pop this in a little bit. These motherboards from ASUS conveniently have both the old and the new holes. So you can just um, use even not technically compatible coolers, which is super neat. And then I'm just gonna get this in here. Oop. Oop. Yeah, we're good. Now, one thing I'm a little bit curious about is Corsair includes different standoffs for LGA 1200 and LGA 1700. So 1200 is compatible, or like the 1200 mounting hardware is compatible all the way back to like Linfield. LGA 1156, which is really neat to have that kind of backwards and forwards compatibility for your cooler. But I'm a little bit confused because they include these two separate standoffs for it, but they don't include two separate backplates for it. So I'm using the LGA 115X 1200 backplate because there's no LGA 1700 backplate that I've seen, but then they gave me LGA 1700 standoffs. So are these 1700 standoffs just exactly the same, but they just have a new label on them so that people don't get confused or what? Let's have a look here. They are not the same. So which one should I use? If I'm using if I have a 1700 CPU, but I'm using the 1200 mounting holes. 1700. Use the 1700 standoffs? Well, I think it's a height thing, is it not? Yeah, well, mm, sort of. It could be a height, yeah, it's, it is a height thing, but I've used. Can you get it in the 1700 holes or no because of the motherboard tray? I, I think I could get it into the 1700 I think you should holes. do that. Okay, all right, all right, we're going. The thing though is that this, hmm, yeah, I'm real confused because the, here, give me a sec, I'll get you guys a look at this. The back plate, if you, oh, bloody hell, I put the power supply back in. Okay, no, 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 I can pull this out, there we go. Okay, because the back plate has the markings for, oh, where is it, like 1366 or something, I can't find it anymore. Hmm. This is making me very, very uneasy. I can't find it anymore, unfortunately. Sorry, Andy, I can't get you to look at that. But I thought I saw like 1366 marked on it, which is why we needed these little sliding things in the first place, because Intel had two sort of enthusiast tier platforms at the same time uh, on two different sockets. Okay, this is annoying. So step one is let's get one of these corners secured so it doesn't move anymore. I wonder if they're reusing an old backplate or something like that, like a one that was 1366 compatible but also just happens to be 1700 compatible. Now this is, I already tightened this again. What's up now? K 
can you shill something for an order? They'll make an order if you call me something. I don't know. I leave, I leave it up to you. This is your judgment call, Jake. You're the producer today. Producer Jake says negatory. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to push on this to get a little bit extra leeway. I need to push this out. And is that the right spot now? There it is. Okay. So what I was doing is I was pushing on the motherboard so that I could move this little um, standoff back here into the right position. And now I can tighten it up from the other side. Now I need to do the same thing with this top one, which has also slipped into the LGA 1200 position. So I'm just going to push on this, move it, and now it's in the right spot. All right. So whatever the backstory is for this backplate, we've got everything in the LGA 1700 spots now, and we're going to use the LGA 1700 standoffs, and we are going to hope for the best. It's interesting to me that ASUS would include LGA 1500 mounting. Ah, oh, there we go. LGA 1500 series mounting and 1200 series mounting holes if they know that there are height issues that would prevent you from using a 15 or 1200 series cooler on there. Let's go ahead and, yep, yeah, we want this fan facing out where it will be able to take in fresh air, I believe. I don't even remember what this case looks like in one piece anymore. So that's a thing. Hopefully I'm putting the power supply in for the last time and I don't need to take it out again. Why do you keep putting it in? I want it in so that I can feel like I'm making progress, Jake. I need progress to happen. All right. Look, we're making great progress here now. We got our motherboard, CPU, RAM, SSD, GPU, power supply. Now we just got to get this cooler in here. We're going top mount for the cooler. Whatever you guys say, that's what I'm, that's what I'm into. That's what we're doing. So this is going to mount a little something like, ooh, interesting. These screws no longer go in the same side of this. So I think it used to be that they went in from this side because I, I put these back in here so I wouldn't lose them, but I guess now they go in from the other side. Whew. This has been such a mind, mind screw. Not, yeah, the, 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 PG, the PG word for it. Here we go. No, not that. Oh, crap, I think it was right already. So wait, what? No, here we go. This way, I think. Yes, there we go. This bracket slides on like that. And then these screws go here. And I think what I could do is I could pre-install the radiator to the bracket and then I could install the whole bracket. But honestly, that's, that's one of those things like removable motherboard trays were a big deal for a while where for whatever reason, a lot of cases were designed with this tray that comes out the back. So you build your motherboard and everything on it and you slide the whole thing in. But back then almost nothing went on the motherboard. You had the CPU, obviously, you had your memory, but we didn't have M.2 SSDs. And coolers were usually so high profile that they couldn't make it through the slide out thing anyway. So you would have to put that on later. So you were doing almost none of the actual building on this removable motherboard tray, super important feature that people cared about for some reason. And eventually it went the way of the dodo. And these are kind of a similar thing for me. It just doesn't contribute a ton for me because I'm used to it, uh, to the installation process for this kind of stuff. But I can see how it would be helpful if you're not used to this sort of, this is not gonna go in here. Uh, interesting. Wait, I have to do it outside of the case. I do not have a choice. So that's good to know because once this is in, I actually no longer have access to the fan slot that is nearest to me here. Look at this. 
This entire slot is covered by the case once I have it installed there, so I have to do it here. Fine. That's fine. Fine, just fine. I am going for a pull configuration. I like the pull configuration. I like the low maintenance-ness of it. Intel hardware, AMD hardware, Intel hardware. Let's get these back in the box that they came from. That's something that drives me crazy. You've got just like a random, a random bag of screws at the end of your build. You got no idea where it came from. Few things bother me more than that about building PCs. Okay, let's go ahead and put that there. To be clear, this is easier. It's just something that I don't really have that much trouble with anymore, like kind of lining everything up. But I've seen first time builders really, really struggle with it. That build we did with Seth Curry, for example, he did eventually get it, but I, man, did I ever have him go hard mode on that. <laughs> for someone who's building their first machine, it's probably not best. He was a trooper though. Totally good sport. You never know with stuff like that. Like celebrity collabs are something that we've honestly kind of shied away from for the most part because, um, you know, if I know anything about, hmm, how do I say this? I don't like dealing with divas. I just don't have time for it. Um, like I'm all the diva that I need in a room. I was just gonna say. Yeah. I don't like dealing with divas either, but I, um, I'm employed by a diva. Look, I try to be pretty low drama, Jake. You're just stubborn. I definitely like things a certain way. It's, that's how I like to say it. Look, I think the way I like things has been pretty good to all of us for the most part. Okay. Man, this is a this is a really weird cooking show. <laughs> Anyway, the point is we've generally tried to not avoid, but I haven't gone out of my way really to do a ton of, you know, celebrity collaborations because I just, they're busy and their communication tends to be really poor and they don't have time. Like I understand it, they're busy people, but it just means it's a lot of work to deal with them. And, you know, I got a life, so I, I tend not to do it. But I forget where I was going with this story. Oh God, well, we touched the thermal compound which means that it's on something, uh, but I couldn't tell you what at this point. Um, well, we'll get that mounted to the socket soon enough. Whoa! Uh, okay, well, that's a cover that goes on it. Guess we're just dragging that thermal compound around some more. There we go. Oops, let's get all of them in at the same time. Hey, that helps. Does it have a screw to secure it? Fantastic, I'm sorry? Does that bracket have a screw that you can use to secure it? Absolutely, it's got two Sweet. screws that go in at the back here, and then the whole thing should be in place pretty good. Now yeah. I wish that it actually had more of these little clips like it has at the back. These little clips here, you wanna get a look at those, Andy? I wish it had more of those along this side because this whole side of it is not actually being really held up by anything. So uh, these little clips like this, these little tabs, can you see that? Yeah. So you got the screws at the one end, you got tabs at the other end, and then you've got tabs along the one side. Oh, Linus, the so front panel it. connectors. Front panel connectors? Which front panel connectors? You're not gonna be able to plug them in with that AIO. Oh, the darn it. Okay. People kept saying, get him to do the front panel. Boy, like, this what is... What do you mean the front panel? You know what's funny is normally I'm pretty good about doing my front panel right away, knowing that it might be difficult to get at later but I'm not used to a radiator covering up the bottom of the case. It's usually the GPU I'm concerned about. So since this GPU is obviously a non-issue for that, I was like, oh yeah, whatever. Autopilot here, let's just get this stuff installed. Okay, yeah, let's do our front panel connectors real quick here. Yeah, we got a lot of, oh, we got a lot of front IO on this bad boy. And this puppy fits so much front IO. Oh, did you put both of them? Uh, did I put a what now? Did you put both of them in there? I did. I did. I thought that would be cool. Uh, so here's our front audio. Let's just try to, hmm, try to kind of squeeze this by here. Oh, wow, really? No, that's okay, we can do it. I'm just gonna go like this. Oh yeah, there we go. So front audio is gonna, oh wow, just freaking barely make it. Okay, that's, wow, that's really tightly in Lee. It's a good thing that 
I didn't try to install an MATX motherboard or something like that. Wait, what? Hello? Uh, that's super weird. Do you think now is what safe is to order food? Oh, interesting. No, this is a front panel block. Ah, uh, is now safe to order food? Man, I got to tell you, I have no idea how long this is going to take. That's awesome. That makes the front I.O. super easy to plug in. That's great. Just one block, and as long as your motherboard happens to have the right pinout, then you're good. Now, I believe this one should be the right pinout, just looking at how it's configured. Uh, but if it's not, don't worry. These are super easy to remove. Just get like a little needle or a pin or something like that. You fold up this little thing, pop the pinout, and then just put it in the place where it needs to be. And then next time, it'll be super easy to use. The first time, it'll be a bit of a chore. Should you run the, uh, the EPS connectors as well? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get all the motherboard connectors plugged in now because I don't want to run into any more trouble like that. I actually need to tighten up the motherboard screws again because I have to take them off again. Ooh. Man, you know it would be really embarrassing after talking so much about how the LTT screwdriver, the bit's never going to come out when you're tightening screws if it like happened live. I swear to you guys, it has not happened yet. I'm not expecting that to happen, but it would be extremely embarrassing. Okay, here's our front panel audio. That makes that's a more sensible length for that, considering that it could be, you know, you could theoretically install an ITX motherboard in this thing and your front audio could be like way over here somewhere. All right, let's get that installed there. This is a super cool case. I am really liking it. It's a lot more work to build in so far, but it's in my humble opinion, at least so far, I think it's kind of worth it. It's pretty cool. I'm liking it. Okay, we got our front USB type C. We got our front USB type A number one. Someone's saying this is a long stream. Did I overhear that? Who's over there? What are you, what are you implying? Are you saying I'm slow at building computers because I do things multiple times because I do them out of order? Yes. Like, look at this. I had this running through here, and then I had to unbat it, and then I get to do it again now. Maybe I just like building computers so much that I, I do things over again out of the, sh the sheer joy of it. You ever think of that, smart guy? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, you did. No, you didn't. Well, you might have thought of it, but then you would have immediately dismissed it as being stupid. What's going on? Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, Nicholas uh, has got our, our smoke machine over there, which we're going to use to have a look at our airflow configuration when we're done, hopefully, assuming like all the fans turn on and stuff. You know, it'd be way easier if you just bought a pre-built from NZXT. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do I have an integration spot that I'm supposed to do? Is it also for NZXT? Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah, maybe I should uh, do, my, do my read for that now then. Hello, four, four swipes. Can you please pay attention? Touchpad, hello? There we go. Boop, boop, boop. And, oh, see, I miss my touch screen sometimes. Thanks to NZXT for sponsoring today's video. With NZXT Build, getting a custom built PC is easier than ever. Set your budget, see how your system will perform in the games that matter to you at either 1080p or 1440p, and NZXT does the rest. They have a flat $99 assembly fee in your local currency, and their pricing for components are completely transparent, so you know how much you're spending on the actual components of your system. They've got a one, uh, I believe it's a one-year warranty. Uh, oh, they're celebrating the holiday season by giving you $99 off the purchase of any custom pre-built or PC kit from Build. Oh, that's super cool. So they you have the assembly for free? Though? Yeah, basically free assembly. Uh, they have uh, expert live chat for real-time help and troubleshooting, free and easy returns if it doesn't beat the Build Engine FPS um, performance guarantee, and you can check out NZXT Build at the link in the video description. They really picked the right video to sponsor <laughs> because this machine has been so... Uh, I mean, I wouldn't call it difficult because everything's still, you know, standard, standard components. It all fits together and everything. But I wouldn't call it beginner-friendly either. <laughs> So I could see someone watching this stream and kind of going, ah, you know what, forget it. So to be clear, guys, this is not representative of the difficulty of the average PC build at all. You can definitely put something together a lot more quickly and a lot easier than this. 
All right, let's get this. Uh, I just want to also mention if speaking. you're interested in any of the parts from this computer, those are also linked in the description. Asus. Bad boy. This is the second time I've caught you guys on this. This is a brand new board, I believe. Ooh, unless it's not. Is this a brand new board, Jake? Uh, it has been used once before. It's been used. Never mind. It could be us then. Oh, there's a bent pin in the USB 3 header. That's Just, probably us. Do you think it was us? Okay. It was from the, the mesh or no mesh thing. Okay. Can you send uh, Logistics a little note just to make sure that when they pull out these USB 3 headers, they pull them straight out? They didn't pull it out. They didn't pull it out? No. Well, then who pulled it out? I don't want to just... Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't name names. Stream. Don't name names. But remind, if you know who did it, remind whoever it is that these have to come out straight. And I'll explain to you guys. Oh, man. There's that thermal compound. Uh, whatever. LTT store t-shirts, they can also be a wipe. Okay, uh, I'll explain to you guys why this is so important. Come have a look at this, Andy. So one of these pins, one of these middle pins here, you can see is actually slightly bent. It comes off, it comes out this way a little bit now, instead of straight out. These are extremely thin pins. They're really fragile. And what can happen is if you pull it out at an angle to make it a little bit easier to kind of rock it out, it can bend them as you're removing the connector. And when it is offset by even that much, because these pins are so thin and so fragile, when you go to plug in another one next time, you're going to take that. It requires quite a lot of force to get this in, so you won't be able to tell the difference. So it'll be slightly offset, it'll hit the wrong spot, you'll force it in, and you will mash that pin flat. Now, I have actually managed to recover such a mashed flat pin. But it was not easy, and it was very time consuming, and life is too short to have to do that. So I would strongly recommend doing everything in your power to make sure that does not happen to you by pulling out your USB 3 connectors straight rather than rocking them out of the housing. Can we just cancel USB 3.0 headers? Yeah, USB 3.0 headers are the worst. The 3.1 ones should just be used for everything. I would say they're worse than Molex. I believe they're quite expensive, though, the 3.1 headers. So I think that's why we're still using the old 3.0 style headers for USB type A. Um, otherwise there's no reason they couldn't just, oh no, they couldn't just use the other one because it's reversible. No, it's not reversible. Why do they need to use this one for that, for only one port? Good question. That requires further investigation because they're always hooked up to only a single USB-C port. I wonder if it's a power requirement thing. Man, now that's something I want to ask, like Asus or Gigabyte or MSI or something. Like, hey guys, why don't you just use the Type-C, like USB 3.1 style uh, header for your regular Type-A external ports? Is it, is it a pin configuration thing or what? All right, all our front USB 3 is connected. Oh, where's our cable mod cables? We have some cable mod cables. Oh, oh you right. You have a bucket of them. Oh, okay, hold on a second. This is going to be a bit of a thing. Also, I brought um, two, or I got them to bring two colors. Oh, good lord. You specifically said don't do that, so I figured I should. Okay, so cable mod has, I mean, everything, right? You can get all different colors, all different lengths, all kinds of stuff here. And one of the problems that we have, though, is because they build things to order, a lot of the time we're kind of last minute on our projects. So we never managed to get custom length ones. So we're not really showing them at their best. So we had the brilliant idea of ordering one of everything, one of every length in a couple of key colors for a couple of key models of power supply that we use quite often so that we'd have um, custom length cables just on hand. Well, I didn't realize that that was going to be I mean, I could have realized it if I had just done some simple basic math, um, but that was hundreds of cables. And hundreds of cables is like hundreds of pounds of cable mod cable. So these are apparently all 950 mil. These are all 1,000 mil. Uh, yeah, so I guess that'll give you an idea of how ridiculous this whole situation is. But what it means is that, is that we can definitely have custom length cables for our build here. Uh, oh, have these been all mixed up? I mean, I guess you kind of need some of one length and some of other lengths. 
Let's try and find a good length of 24 pin. We're just gonna go black cables because that's what I found first. Apparently we've got another color over here. Well, nope. the, gray, the gray's over Jake, here. Jake, they like, only uh, brought one color. No, oh, no, the grays are behind you. Yeah, well, All just... three of these boxes are just black? I think there's more too. Oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. All right, let's see if this 24 pin fits. This is, what was this, 350 mil? Man, we gotta keep these in the baggies. If we don't, we are gonna be in for a world of hurt. Or we need a better system for storing them. We need to come up with our own system for storing them. Bins. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm, I'm perturbed. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Put in the, you should really put in the GPU riser. I will put in the GPU riser. I will. I'm aware of the GPU riser. I'm just doing a test fit for my cables here. Okay, Jake? Test fit in my cables, okay? I think this 350 mil is Wait, are, if, if they're pre-made, are they still cable mod? Uh, yes, the pre-made ones are still cable mod because we asked them to mod custom lengths in every length for us. So they're still custom, even if they're pre-made for us. They were pre-custom. Okay, this seems like a pretty reasonable length. I could go find something a little bit shorter, but I don't think that's actually necessary. Sweet, I should do a couple of merch messages at some point here. Love the battery life of this thing. Um, waiting on screwdriver to release. Any idea how soon is soon? Oh my goodness. You're gonna keep pushing those through, hey? Yeah. Look, oh, oh shoot, I just archived the next one because I was trying to archive that one. Oh, bananas, that was my bad. If you can unarchive it, then great. Otherwise, if you can just read it out, that'd be cool. I don't know. The screwdriver will come when it comes and there's nothing I can really do about it. I'm gonna grab my little thumb screws. My apologies for whoever's message I just archived. I think it is uh, watched over the years, and I love how you built a team-focused brand and treat your team with respect. Love you guys. Happy holidays. Hey, thanks for that. Thanks for noticing. We actually do care, believe it or not. Can can confirm. There's I'll, there's I'll a reason. I'll give him that. There's a. I like to think there's a reason that our retention is as good as it is. Notice how many of the original LMG employees still work here? I'll give you a hint. The answer starts with all and ends with all. Uh, <laughs> uh, we got uh, Christian. Bonjour from Quebec. Love the underwear. Best ones I've ever purchased. This is my third pack. Love it. Love the color of the indoor hoodie. I have to buy one. Picked up the dark aqua. Very nice. Uh, any tips about keeping my computer from heating up my room like crazy when I stream and play at the same time? Oh, what a good question. So. I do have a great solution to that, but you're not gonna like it. <laughs> Shut up, Jake. <laughs> if you go check out a little series, okay, a little series we did back in the day called Whole Room Water Cooling. <laughs> okay, sh shut up all of you, <laughs> for real. <laughs> Uh, our f it was focused around the idea of installing water blocks, okay, to pull the heat off of the hottest components in the system, CPU, GPU, and then tubing that ran out of the room to the roof where there was a radiator mounted, and then I had a pump in the bathtub, which you don't actually have to do. You could just have some other kind of pump, I guess. Anyway, the idea was that we were, we were taking the heat off the hottest components and then kicking it outside of the house. Didn't end up really working out that well because we had issues with rust forming in our... Don't use steel radiator. Don't, well, okay. No one saw I'm that coming. I'm still angry at Princess Auto because that was marked stainless steel, Jake. It was marked stainless steel. <laughs> you should have just used a plastic. It was not. Anyway. I know I should have used plastic. Retrospect, hindsight. Hindsight is 2020, as they say. So we had a bit of a rust problem, among other problems. We also used copper tubing for the inside of the room. Luke's dad did an amazing job with the copper tubing runs. Think about copper tubing. Um, it does a great job of radiating the heat like out of it, <laughs> which is fine if you want maximum cooling, but is not fine if you're trying to remove the heat from the room. So we would have actually- have insulated it. Yeah, we would have needed to insulate our copper tubing runs, which we didn't do. Uh, but someone who actually did manage to successfully deploy a whole room water cooling system was Ant Venom, the Minecraft streamer. So he put his radiator and, or did I say streamer? Sorry, YouTuber. Uh, so he put his, uh, his radiator and a bucket, which is what he used for his reservoir, in the basement and then ran it up through the floor. 
worked perfectly for him for years. He still has it. He, does he still have it? Yeah. Oh, that's freaking awesome. So cool. Ant Venom did that. And then another way to go about it is using optical or even just longer regular cables to have your system be in another room altogether. So that's the way that I have, uh, have gone about it lately. So I have my system in like a closet beside my room and then I've got my peripherals and monitor out in my room and then I run cables through the wall so that I don't have to, I A, don't have to listen to it and B, it doesn't kick heat out into the room that I'm actually trying to occupy. Okay, let's get this out of the way real quick here. And let's go ahead and install, oh, interesting. Um, oh, that's very interesting. So it looks like Lee and Lee doesn't really have a plan in terms of using these mounting holes on here or anything. At least as far as I can tell, it didn't seem to include any other hardware that allowed you to kind of uh, you know, mount this to something. So we're just going to go ahead, plug this into our GPU. Is that really how they intend you to do this? I mean, is that it? I think that's it. Uh, this 24 pin is definitely going to be a little bit problematic. That's OK. It's not plugged in or anything. We'll just pull this out. I really don't want to get this grommet accidentally pulled out because it's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt to put back in. You know what, Jake? I actually, hmm, I don't know what the best play, way to handle this is. How the devil are you supposed to cable manage this? I think it's like, literally supposed to just go across the top and look terrible. What? No. No. That can't be right. Can you run it behind the back of the... Well, that's what I was kind of thinking. I, I assumed that that was the idea, that you would go here, but I'm looking at the length of this. I don't think it'll reach. My friends, we've made a terrible mistake. Um, <laughs> People are like, here we go. I typed this 50 minutes ago. <laughs> um, well, that's on my producer, OK? Well, I didn't want to say anything because you were so um... oh. You were so uh, you know, interested by this mounting solution? Every once in a while, you see a novel solution. You go, wow, why didn't anybody ever think of that? And then you try it, and you're like, wow, that's, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You could undo it. Meanwhile, this is from the same company what bring you RGB 24-pin you know, power supply cables. Oh no, no, Jake, we're committed. We're committed. This is, this is the build, for better or for worse now. The people have spoken. I just don't have to be happy about it. At least it's black. Yeah, at least it's black. That is a, that is not much of a silver lining for me right now. I am not Do you think happy. maybe once you put the AIO in, you could like kind of hide it behind the AIO tubes? Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. That means that we might end up putting the AIO in on the other side. Otherwise, they might cross. Or between the RAM slots, the worst. maybe. OK, I really need this. I wish I had just left this 24-pin connector going through here, especially now that I know. Because I, I saw these holes here, and I assumed that those were for PCIe, like whether you had it mounted like this way or this way. Like I thought they were just two different, because they're so wide, these cable management grommets here. I thought they were for the PCIe cable to run for the GPU, depending on which orientation you had the case in. But they are totally not. They are just for cables, and this connector just runs across the motherboard. That is, that is horrendous. We should have totally gone with the regular vertical mount, not the uh, whatever this one's called. What is it called? Upright, not the upright mount. Why would you want the GPU upright just so that it, the cables around it can look terrible? Again, champagne problems, right? Oh, my cable on my 3090, it's unacceptably bad, it's so ugly. I get it. These are, these are not big problems in the grand scheme of things, but they're just... Sometimes it's not about the size of the problem, right? It's not the size of the problem that offends me. It's the unnecessariness of the problem. <laughs> this, is, this is a highly unnecessary problem. All Lee and Lee had to do to prevent this problem was in R&D for this product, go, wow, this is terrible. And then make zero of them. Um, and that would have been, that would have completely solved this problem forever for everyone. 
Do instead, you think if, we, if we put another riser into that riser, it would still work. Uh, if we did extend the riser, it is probable that it would still work, but it is uh, improbable that it would work at Gen 4 speed. It would almost certainly be locked at Gen 3 speed. But, and we're building a performance computer here today, Jake. This is about performance, and we are keeping it. I'm committed. You can never say I'm not committed, Jake. That's for darn oh, sure now. Uh, the person that. Horrible. Uh, I. The person that, that called that it? Potentially messed up that USB 3 header says they never used it. So it's possible it's from the factory, actually. Okay. Okay. Well, okay. I'm, I'm not going to tell you who it was. If but... it was Asus, then bad boy um, or lady or whatever, uh, anything goes. Bad, though. And if it was whoever was internal, then bad, but uh, hopefully it wasn't our internal fault that that was bent. To be clear, I looked closer at it. It wasn't bent enough that it would definitely cause a problem, but it was bent enough that it could cause a problem if you were anything but perfect in your alignment of it as you install it. Okay. Radiators in. Oh, no. Where do these guys need to go? Um... Can I get at these? Oh, I think I kind of can. Yeah, I can. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So we'll pull, yeah, we'll pull those back through from the other side, which means we can finally install our CPU cooler here. Now, where did that cover for it go? Ah, there's still enough of the thermal compound on there, right, Andy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it seems fine to me. All right. You should replace it. So, nope, I'm not doing it. I, I even brought you a tube of noctothermal paste. Thanks, Jake. SMH. <laughs> All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and... Now, I'm trying to remember if these 1700 standoffs are taller or shorter, but I am noticing that it's... I think this they're is... They're shorter. I think they're shorter. I think this is going to be higher mounting pressure. Yeah, well, you have to be careful with them. Maybe that'll help for performance, but it kind of feels like you could over-tighten them. Like, Just there's a lot... People in the chat have said here. that they have done the same thing and over-tightened them, so yeah. don't over-tighten them. Okay. Now, normally on these AIO coolers, you just go until things stop, and that's how they're intended to be used, but I'm really, I'm not 100% sure about this. That's a lot of mounting pressure. Mm. Yeah, sorry, Andy. You can really see that bracket bending. Um. Hey. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to call that good for now. And maybe you're intended to tighten it all the way down, but I don't I don't like it. That's already that is freaking tight right now. Oh hey, uh Lee and Lee actually has a specific way you're supposed to mount this. Lee and Lee has a plan for this? For the cable run that looks a little less horrible? Yeah, and I'm I'm going to show it to you on the second monitor here. Is it like like this or something? Here, zip ties. Zip ties. Uh, yeah. No, I see it. So they want you to go kind of this way. Yeah, that is slightly less horrible. You're correct. It's still horrible. Um, thanks, float plane person who said that. Yeah, thanks, guys. And float plane's always got our back, you know? You mean Twitch chat? Is, was it Twitch chat? I thought you said float plane sent it. Uh, same difference. It's not the. Oh, man, float plane's going to flip. Jake, don't antagonize Floatplane. You know that they like help pay our salaries, right? Yeah. What's Twitch chat ever contributed? <laughs> don't suck up to them. Okay. Twitch chat number one. Oh man, this is. What's the? I mean, should we just like? Should we just twist it up? Wait, what's the solution here? It's all horrible. It doesn't matter. Is that like? Should we just make it as bad as possible then? If it's gonna be awful, might as well be peak awful. I, oh, I just will. Just, we'll just leave it for now. I can't. I can't look at it right now. I can't look at you. Look, anything's better than YouTube chat, okay? If we're gonna have big fat cables running across the motherboard, they might as well all be big and fat. So here comes this one from Corsair. <laughs> Oh, oh man. Yeah, who needs cable management anyway? That would actually be a fun theme for a build, Jake. You should do a zero cable management build. Just no thought given to it whatsoever. Don't even put the cables behind the tray. Yeah, just, just like... don't even bother. 
We'll do it like late oh, 90s, early 2000s style. Like a case with a basement that has a cutout in the basement, so you just go down right to the power supply. Yep, straight <laughs> up, or straight down rather. That sounds like a build stream idea. Um, okay, there we go. All right, we're gonna do a little bit of cable management on this one. I haven't completely given up yet. I mean, I've mostly given up, but we're gonna at least do that so we can hide that cable. And then this big fat boy, I mean, conveniently doesn't have a GPU in the way, which is neat, is gonna go right up here through the top. Little something like that. Oh yeah, perfect. Oh shoot. I have been streaming for a long time. I actually started with not a lot of battery left on that thing. I was impressed that it was still running at all, but Jake, do you mind uh, grabbing a power adapter for my laptop? Plus, plus producer. Thank you. You okay? You, are you dead? Uh, yeah, I got one in my bag. It's around here somewhere. It's just in the main like uh, pouch of holding. Yeah, I call it that because it has no, well, it has one little zipper pouch in it, but other than that, it's just intended to be a giant oh. open space so that you can actually throw big stuff in it. Like I see so many backpacks that are big, framework. but you, no, you can use anything you want. I didn't buy it. I didn't buy a framework one because oh. you don't have to. Right. That's how you, that's how you actually address e-waste Apple. You make it optional. You provide it at a fair price. I bought a new iPhone. It didn't come with a charger. So you make it available at a fair price, or you make it optional if the person doesn't need it. That was hard. And you know what I did? I'm still using the same bricks, but I bought other cables. So even more e -waste. Nice. Ugh. Thanks, Apple. <sighs> yeah. Well, you were already lightning last time you used an iPhone, right? Were you like iPhone 8 or so? Yeah, I think my last iPhone was an 7? Seven? 7, okay. I had like a red look. edition 7. I mean, look, I can't keep track of absolutely everyone's phone that they use and stuff like but that. But you know what I did is I gave away my lightning cables to friends oh. and stuff just because I haven't had them in years. That makes sense. So, yeah. Yep. Why aren't they just type C? I don't well, know. At least hopefully they're still in use, so that's something. Eh, they're probably just broken at this point. Well, that's that's also a thing. That's that's definitely a thing that happens. Good old lightning. All right, pulling all these fan cables through. So these are for both power and RGB for the fans. I configured them in an exhaust orientation, so they're going to be pulling air from the inside of the case and blowing it out the top which we're gonna show you guys with the smoke machine a little bit later, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're getting a better smoke machine. This one was just, we had a video where we really needed a smoke machine. And so we picked this one up secondhand. Uh, it's like good enough. It was good enough for us to get that video done, but we're gonna have something better coming for when we do more like case airflow analysis and stuff like that. We've needed one forever, we've just put it off. So we're gonna get one on order, hopefully very soon. Uh, Nicholas, who was in here sort of poking at this one, uh, is going to be in charge of finding us something good. Like our custom nozzle at the end there, it's just a bunch of little straws like taped together because... No, they're from, uh, that's a vacuum attachment. It's a vacuum attachment. So I bought a kit of vacuum attachments for the, the Milwaukee vacuum we have, and that's one of them. Are you kidding? No. Okay, that's not what I thought that was. I thought that was just a random thing that we there's came a, up with. There's a very specific purpose for that style, and I'm not, I don't quite remember what it I is. I guess it would be like you're trying to get a whole bunch of really small particles picked up in sort of like a hard to reach or like an area where it's Somebody better to have flexibility. Like sure. you want higher. Oh, it's for crevices. Pressure? Because then the, the, crevices, sure. the uh, straws push in. Got it. That makes sense. Oh, okay. Well, shows you what I know then. Anyway, we had to put that in there because otherwise the smoke isn't thick enough on this one. So we'll get that fired up a little bit later. Oh my goodness, this is definitely going to take a little while to get all connected though. Oh man, can I access my RGB header? You know what, it doesn't matter because this motherboard has four RGB headers and one of them is somewhere else. Thank goodness. Okay, now. 
we can go ahead and install. You know what? Six fans is probably lots, right? So do we want to go maybe six on the bottom, or three on the bottom, three on the top, and just blow right through? That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that Especially sounds pretty good to there's me. There's no GPU in the way. Exactly. So we're just going to have this completely unimpeded airflow. That's actually really cool. Unless the GPU makes like a really bad airflow interruption. You know what I mean? Let's see. Let's see. We're obviously going to have to. Ooh. Uh, does this SSD have like uh, an OS on it? Presumably. Uh, okay. Well, let's hope so. I mean, you were the one who did prep for this video, right? Yeah. So does it? I didn't check that one thing, but uh, oh. I have another SSD we can put in there instead. Okay, well, we'll hope for the best. Okay, so we got our, oh my goodness, is there ever a lot to connect here. First of all, from our AIO, we're gonna go into our Commander, whatever this thing is called. I think it's Commander Core, right? Then- It's Commander Core. Is it Core? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Then we're gonna go from our fans. So I'm kind of thinking, this one is our primary? No, I'm gonna go this one's our primary. So that's our first, oh, gosh darn it. Last one to pull through. Okay, this is not the easiest case to work in by a long shot. I do like it. I think the finished build is gonna look really sick, but it's a bit of a challenge. I'd say this is, this is a, a, a C tier for ease. All right, that's going to be RGB number one, RGB number two. Oh, you know what? While I'm at it, I should just plug in the fan connectors as well. So this guy can do up to six, which is a little bit inconvenient because if we want to have a rear exhaust, then I won't be able to connect it to this same hub. Truthfully, though, I'm not actually sure if we need a rear exhaust. And the reason for that is that, like Jake was saying, due to the way that this case is laid out, you're going to have your air going from bottom to top, just essentially passing straight through. Foomp. So you got fresh air just coming in and just passing over all your heat generating components. We've got our radiator, we've got our GPU. And if we were to put an exhaust here, what purpose would it serve? We'd be pulling in fresh air and then kicking it out of the case. What's the point of that? So I'm kind of inclined to leave it. What do you think? I say... Da, 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 drum roll. You only live once. Leave it. You say leave it? All right. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going with leave it. Perfect. Now, what RGB thing had I said before that I wanted to do something with? Where the... Oh, no. This radiator has to come out again. Okay. This is pretty inconvenient. Not being able to access any of your of your front IO connectors here while you're building. Um, not really a fan because some of these things I'm plugging in are for the AIO and the AIO being installed in the case is making it so that I can't access the plugs that they need to go into, which is just a little inconvenient. Um, can I get this USB 2 into the header in there? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, but only if I go full hero mode and uh, try to, oh, uh-oh, nope, that wasn't good. Okay, I think, want to read a merch message or something while I'm trying to do this? Oh, uh, have you been curating them? Yes. Okay, thank you. you yeah, sure, read a curated one. All right, Anonymous says, greetings from McMaster Car. Thanks for the name drop. Oh, hey, that's cool. What's up, McMaster Car? You guys are all right. <laughs> well, I mean, not cheap. I, I think they're pretty great. They're, yeah, but it's quality stuff. That's true. That's, that's like true. our philosophy too. Can that's you really true. chirp them for that? That's fair. That's fair. What you said was fair. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, another person, Radman R, says, amazing work on the mouse pad and water bottle. Keep it up, Linus. Well, I mean, I didn't make them. I just, you know, approved them. I said, yes, these are to my satisfaction. Well, I guess I also, like, kind of spec them. I really didn't like the thickness of any other mouse pad, so that's why we have an oddball thickness that had to be done custom for us. <laughs> 
Oh. Okay. I can be a little bit of a diva sometimes. <laughs> Again, I think it can be a good thing. Okay. I think it's worked out okay. I just wanted a particular thickness. All right. Look, all I'm saying is I just want an all black mouse pad. Okay. <sighs> See, is there de is chat? There really chat. Tell him it's a thing that they want. Is there demand for that? Stealth edition mouse pad. But there's so many all black mouse pads. Okay, they wouldn't be the thickness of ours. That's fair. or the size. Or the sizes. Sizes. Yes, I mean we could. <sighs> oh, it's happening! Oh, uh, it's happening! You guys want just a regular yes, yes, all black yes, mouse pad? Yes, yes. The thing is that we have to know that we're going to sell enough of them because when you support a skew with so many different sizes, man, you gotta. Even People if are it's saying all black with your quality, yes. All black with the quality, okay, well. Okay, all right, Can all right. Can I straw pull it? All right, yeah, fine. I mean, send it to, send it to Nick, because he's the one who has to coordinate it. I can tell you guys right now, we might not be able to get on that immediately because I am kind of strapped for cash. Um, not in like a, like a, hey guys, thank you for your contribution, Wikipedia style, strapped for cash. Um, Wikipedia, important thing by the way. I'm not, I'm not saying they shouldn't fundraise. I'm just saying that for us, it's not like that. Like we're not gonna go out of business. It's just that from a cash flow perspective, because of the screwdriver and the backpack, having so much of our funds deployed, we're not necessarily in a position to you know, spend another quarter million or half a million or million dollars right now bringing in more mouse pads because we just don't have it. So we'll, we'll definitely look into it but I can't promise that it's anything we can do immediately because it's just a business reality that you can only, uh, you can only order from your suppliers what you can afford, right? All right, now these guys are gonna go this way and this is kind of cool. I can't tell if you're actually intended to use these here for this. Is this, is this what these are for? Kind of seems like it. Whoa! <laughs> Hold on, I got it. Okay. So it kind of looks like. Okay, so far we have 63% yes, 23% turnip, and 14% no. All right, thanks everyone, that's very useful. The, uh, look at this, is that what this is for? It kind of looks like it, right Andy? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I can't tell where I'm supposed to go with this cable once I do that. Is it, does it really fit in between here? I honestly can't tell. Okay, so once I put this in here, where does it go? I don't think that's gonna work for me. I think I'm just gonna go straight through these grommets here. Maybe that's how you're, how you're intended to do it. Super cool idea, but I don't think it's gonna work for this particular config right now in the time constraints that I'm dealing with where eventually I do actually have to complete this machine. <laughs> um, all right, so let's put that there. Oh, right. all right. And that, my friends, is why we don't have wireless fan power yet because we need the wires in case we accidentally drop the fan while we're working on the computer. Yes, that is the entire reason. All right, let's get some fans installed. Uh, case screws, where'd they get off to? Hmm, that's interesting. Does Lee and Lee really not include, they not only don't include fans in their cases, but they seem to not really include case screws, or case fan screws for their cases. There's four, that's it. Jake, do you mind running and grabbing the fan screw bin, please? Do you know where it is? Uh, no. I know where it is. I'll be right back. <laughs> Jake, entertain the people. So should I get chicken or beef donair kebab? Or donor kebab? Are you talking about lunch? Yeah. Oh, I am definitely ready. 100% ready, man. I'm only putting in two screws per fan because I got to get some lunch at some point here, boys. All right, there we go. 
You guys really like beef donor donair or Oh no, beef? I like both. I get the mix, man. It's all about that chicken. You should try the mix. Ah, oh, chicken, man. This this place, the beef is good. I'm a chicken guy. Actually, float plane seems to be chicken. Twitch seems to be beef. Well, that shows you. That shows you. Float plane is quality. Float plane knows it's about the chicken. I mean, look at chickens. Could they really be for anything other than eating? Like, come on. <laughs> Actually, I have no respect for cows either. I grew up on a hobby farm, and I. Maybe it was just this one cow, okay? This one cow I had a very bad experience with, but he was just... Some of the animals, so we would raise animals and eat them, um, and some of the animals, like, I felt bad. Like, our pig, who was named Cutie, like, why, why did they... Like, why did my parents allow us to name a pig that we were going to butcher Cutie? Obviously, that was traumatic for everyone involved. I swear I was not an abused child, though. Um, so eating Cutie was a little bit... Uh, uncomfortable for some of us. I didn't mind that much, but one of my siblings was not that into cutie sausage. Um, but the cow, let me tell you, the cow was one that not only was I okay eating, I freaking hated that animal. It's every time I had to get him to do it, he was just such a jerk. Linus, this is getting kind of toxic. Every time I had to get him to do anything, he would just, he was just so antagonistic about it. Couldn't stand him, so I ate him with relish. Like, not like with like sweet, you know, pickle relish. I, I just mean like I relished, I relished eating him. It was good. It was good. I ate him. I ate burgers, and I ate meatballs. Yep. See you later, Petey. That was his name. His name was Petey. Uh, I found out later that he was apparently named after my stepdad. Um, like because they were both sort of obstinate. <laughs> so I think the whole naming thing, um, it was fine for me and the, and the kids that time, but I think my, my stepdad was not a big fan of the, the cow's name. <laughs> to, be, to be clear, uh, he's, he's far less obstinate than the cow. The cow is awful. Um, to be clear, by the way, guys, it's not like I'm not a, like, aware and it's not like I condone the atrocities of the meat industry, but these animals lived good lives. So at least there was some consolation in that. And honestly, you know, this is, this is a, sort of a my momism, but I agree with her. I think that if you're not comfortable eating an animal you raised, then you probably shouldn't be eating meat. Like it has to come from somewhere, guys. So if you're if if that if that truth is something you can't handle, then like I don't know I don't know what to tell you. It's it's not from magic. I just found out we're too far away from GDK to get it delivered here. No, we can't get it. We, I mean, That's we okay. Can, Are you down for a mucho up? run? We could always do a mucho run. Why don't we just go pick it up? Oh, I mean we could do that. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's just do that. I just kind of oh man, I might have talked myself into mucho though. <sighs> I had mucho last night. You had mucho last night? Come oh, on. you ruined everything, Jake. Sorry. That's fine. We can do it. It's only because Chipotle didn't have corn. Don't they were out of corn, so I had to get mucho. Man, I, I prefer mucho. Chipotle's I, I, okay. I like Chipotle for a bowl and mucho for a burrito. That's fair. They're this very video different. brought to you by Mucho Burrito. Actually, I don't even know. Is mucho burrito like even a chain in the States? I or think is, they're just Canadian. Are they just Canadian? Oh, all right. Okay. So how are we doing? Is there any freaking else thing that we need to plug into the bottom here? Yes, yes there is. I need the RGB connector for the case RGB. So it's got a strip along the front that's addressable RGB. Let's go ahead and, oh! It's all good. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Oh man, I think I mashed one of these pins because this wasn't bent earlier today. There we go, it's fixed. All right. Uh, yeah, that's the way it goes on. Cool. Oh, shoot. Cool. There we go. And what else we got going on here? I mean, uh, any more RGB? I think there is one other RGB connector that we need, but I don't remember what it's for. I'm blanking here, Jake. Help me out. Is there any other RGB that's going to be in this case? The front panel strip thing? The light strip. 
There's a light oh, mean, strip on the front. The one on the front? No, that one I just plugged in. Uh, yeah, just, that one we're then good. just the fans and the AIO. Okay. And the GPU and the motherboard. And the AIO. Wait, the AIO. No, that's all it's controlled strange. by the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're good then. Yeah, I think we're good. All right, let's pull this all very, these very pull all these wires computer. through, ideally without clipping any of those pins this time. And then let's install the radiator for the final time. You know you're going to have to take it out again, right? Nope, nope, it's not coming out again. I knew I was going to misplace those screws. Oh, no, they're here, they're here, they're here. I knew I was going to misplace them, so I put them somewhere safe. And sometimes, somewhere safe can be the worst place. Am I right, guys? You take something, you put it somewhere safe, no chance of finding it. All right, this is really shaping up now. Check this out. Is it really out. safe if you lose them? Is this build looking good or what? Ignore this. Ignore this part. Right? Looking pretty good, right? Okay, now it's awful. Boom. Destroyed. <laughs> Get some zip ties. Oh, okay. Or LTT store cable ties. I really don't think that the cable ties are going to help much, Jake. Zip I'm, ties. Zip ties. I just, I'm sorry, I don't think it's better. It's horrible. Can you like tuck it in between the RAM slots or something? Um, oh man. No. It doesn't, like it doesn't tuck, it doesn't cable manage, it just, it just is horrible. What about in between the RAM and the AIO pump? No, it doesn't. It just can't. Okay, I'm going like this. Oh my gosh. We're going. Actually, that's not terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible and you know it. There. That's the best I can do for you people. Oh, actually, that is horrible. I know, Jake! <laughs> <laughs> Me, this is horrible. Jake, you know, I think it's horrible. <laughs> Freaking! <laughs> I know! <laughs> do I look happy about this? It, okay, it's not, it's not as bad as if it was just floating there. You're right. It could certainly be worse. <laughs> did you plug in the pump yet? It's atrocious. I did. I did. PCIe power? Uh, no, I have not done PCIe power yet. Are you going to have to take the graphics card out? Mm, no, it should be fine. Or the radiator? No, it should be fine. Okay. So we're going to put that there. We're going to put another one here. I'm going with this. I know it's not great. In fact, it's horrible. But we are rolling with it. Okay, there we go. Let's get another one. Man, what a waste. What a waste. Imagine spending an extra $100 to do this to your computer. Imagine. I can't. Okay. What's up? What am I looking at? What's up, Arlo? What's he doing? Just laying. Just laying. Lying. Just lying, because he's got the mane. Jake and his cat. <laughs> Man, we should totally resurrect Linus cat tips. Just put like videos just, of our cats. Can we like group contribute to it? I'd be super down. I actually uploaded to it recently. Really? Yeah, I got a cute little video of Dash just like playing in a bag. I just want to post a video of Super Arlo cute. sitting like a human. It's so funny. His cat sits like he's lounging on the couch like this. <laughs> Who does that? All right. Let's uh, go ahead and pull this off. All right. This is coming together. This is coming together. We're real close now, actually. All we got to do is wire up the... Oh, hold on. Wire up the fans. Got to get power to the GPU and to the CPU. And we're real close. Oh my goodness, this is horrible. Now it's in the way of getting this peel off, which is exactly what I need right now. Oh, stop. Oh, stop. Okay. Go back on there. Perfect. Well, perfect is a strong word. Okay, let's go for... <laughs> I'm thinking like 450 mil for our PCIe power. Does that sound pretty good? Sound bueno? Are you expecting me to say okay? Yes? 950, 550. Try 550. 
450. I think 450 is going to be the play, Jake. I'm betting big. I'm betting big. If I'm wrong, then uh, the donaire's on me, all right? These are for, for GPU. Four, ooh, 450 might not be long enough. Ah, oh, balls. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I might have been wrong. We need three 8 pins. So hopefully, as part of our epic cable mod order, we ordered enough of those. 450 mil. Ah, and that's a 6 pin. Okay. There's a lot of... Whew, there's a lot of cables here. EPS. Wait. PCIe. There's one. Oh, I really hope I have enough of them. EPS? Wait. Why are there so many EPS? Oh, is PCIe. One side of the bag is EPS, the other side is PCIe. PCI, PCI. Wait. That's uh, that's a six pin. Okay, so we need eight pin, eight pin PCIe. I do need two EPSs, so oh, those are probably going to be a different length. Of, oh, actually, no, probably pretty similar. Okay, so let's hold on to EPS as well. But I do need another, so there's another EPS. This video might be longer than the building 12 land gaming stations in English. Yeah, this video is approaching, approaching epic length here. It's like three hours and 20 I minutes. should definitely give you guys that update that I promised like two hours ago on the backpack. <laughs> so the deal with the backpack is that a lot of the changes that I asked for when I first got the sample that I'm using right now, I am no longer happy with. And so what we're doing now is we're actually going back and we're further changing some of those things and reverting some of them to Bridget's original design. And the reason for that is that I think she, she nailed some of it that I sort of thought was going to be a problem, but I was totally wrong about. And um, some of it we both got wrong. So I can show you guys some of the things that we're going to change, but um, the reason that I was putting it off was because I didn't want to talk about it until I had sort of a break in physically building the computer. And that has never happened today. This has been such an intense, like, or labor intensive build that I just, <laughs> it's been constant. Okay, is this gonna make it? You know what, I think this is gonna make it, Jake. I think I got it. Wow, that is really tight. Check this out. So our eight pin goes here because this is such a tall GPU. We run around behind the back plate. It really is such a shame that the cable management of this upright GPU mount is so good, except for the part that matters the most, the PCIe extension. Tis a crying shame. Ow. Ow. No hands are small enough to fit in here, I don't think. Oh, mine are. <laughs> okay. I got this. Let's so we'll pull this around to the back. Oh, there we go. Let's see if it can reach. Oh yeah, this is the beauty of custom length cables. You get around to the other side, there's ooh, not a ton of extra run. You just, here we go. There it is. Plug that bad boy in and you're good to go. So let's go down to there for that one. Cool, so I gotta run a couple more of those. Let me have a look and see if we've got some merch messages here. Oh, fingerprint. There's nothing? Nothing. Oh, all right. Nobody wants to say anything to you. Well, maybe I could look at, um, maybe I could look at, ooh, hold on, which, ah, gosh darn it. I love trackpad gestures. There we go. Maybe we could check out float plane chat here. Oh, my table's a little messy. Oh. Uh, somebody's wondering if Luke has gotten his hammer yet? Luke has not gotten his hammer. I don't think Luke is ever getting that hammer. For those of you wondering what the context of this is, uh, Luke backed a hammer. It's like this cool pry bar slash hammer thing on Kickstarter like six years ago, <laughs> something like that, six, seven years ago. And he's been getting regular updates on it for almost that entire time, but it has not shipped yet. It's got to be the really? world's most Regular updates? complex hammer. Yeah, yeah, there have been updates pretty much the entire time, which is crazy because most Kickstarters give up long before that. All right. 
pre-bending cables is such a pro move, guys. You gotta make sure you pre-bend your cables. You gotta kind of give them a little bit of memory before you try and do something crazy like this bend here. Something to note, by the way, guys, is we're using the, I think they're called Pro or something like that. They're Pro cable combs from Cable Mod. They're metal. So if we had a GPU that doesn't have a back plate, this would not be a safe way to route them. I would be a little bit worried about them shorting out the back of the GPU. But ouch, because our GPU does have a back plate, I am not worried about that. And we're just going to go ahead and YOLO it. Okay, this is going to, you know what, I'll deal with that on the other side. Okay, got the cable comb over there. Oh man, what a shame, because it really does look super, super nice on this side. This, uh, the GPU mount here. Somebody's wondering your uh, thoughts on the Galaxy Watch versus Apple Watch. Ah, Galaxy Watch versus Apple Watch. Um, honestly, I have not taken the time to really get to know my Galaxy Watch and set it up properly. I've gone full boomer on it, and I still don't really know uh, what all the buttons do for muscle memory. Like, I can go through and, and figure it out pretty easily. Not going to lie, I miss my Pebble time. Um, it was everything that I needed a smartwatch to be and nothing more. Tactile buttons so that I could actually use it with gloves on. This has tactile well, you buttons. You can use but it, that with gloves. Yeah, I don't think you can. Can you use the buttons to like change tracks and stuff though? Uh, I think so. Because that was a ton of what I used to do with a smartwatch that was actually useful for me. Just like uh, changing my music tracks and stuff like I that. I bought my Galaxy Watch 4 and now I'm going to have to sell it and buy an Apple Watch. The fitness, oh, that's right, you just bought that. Uh, good luck on your resale value on that Galaxy Watch, by the way. Yeah, well, I got it for 100 bucks less, but that's yeah, fair. still. Um, so did pretty much everyone, I guess. As far as fitness tracking goes, the Galaxy Watch does a much better job of figuring out when I'm exercising. The Apple Watch was just, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't figure out why anyone takes it seriously at all like Apple's fitness tracking. I think this was a Gen 6 or something like that. Like it was just a joke. I'd, I'd be, was mine Gen 7? Uh, your was I think it was 6. Five. It wasn't 5 for sure. That's 6? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, the point is it was not a super old one and it was just laughable. Like I would be drenched in sweat having just consumed one and a half of these in the last hour and a half. And it would be like, you can do this. Yeah, you can do this. Try to get some exercise today. And I'm sitting here going, <laughs> what? I found like, the I'm, not trying to, I'm not trying to you know, develop a disorder here. Like, <laughs> the Galaxy Watch, I think, is pretty good about picking up. Like, if I'm even just doing a little bit more strenuous walking, like if I have to carry some stuff around, it's like, you've been doing a workout. Yep. You burn 30 calories. Galaxy Watch figures it out. Um, what does better than either of them, though, is actually I've been using an Ura Ring for a while. There's, I have issues with the Ura Ring. Even though it lasts almost a week on a charge, it's way less convenient to get off and put onto the charger. So sometimes I'll have gaps of like four days in my data because I'm just a space cadet and I don't get around to charging it. Um, and in a way, like something that you have to charge every day can be more part of your routine than something that you only have to charge once in a while. So it can actually be having one day battery life can be a good thing from sort of a routine and, and workflow perspective. Um, but what it does really well is it absolutely nails when I am working hard or when I'm being lazy. Because it lasts longer than a day, you can actually use it as a sleep tracker. Like it's always been such a joke to me that Apple even bothers to have sleep tracking features. Like, why? It's not like, what do I have two Apple Watches? And yeah. I wear one at sleep and one, during, one when I sleep and one during the day? I like, also it's stupid. don't wanna wear a watch at night. Yeah, when am I supposed to charge it? <laughs> um, so there's just sort of usability uh, problems that the ring solves. It's not super comfortable. Like, if I squeeze my fingers like that, you can see it like mashes because it's kind of thick. But I, I've been pretty happy with it. I didn't pay for my uh, second gen one. They sent me one as part of like a sponsorship deal that I, we, I don't think we ever ended up doing, but I was curious about it anyway, so I decided to try it. Uh, and then they offered all gen two ring owners a lifetime, uh, lifetime access to their subscription service that they've introduced now if they upgrade to gen three. 
So I was like, well, I like this thing enough to just use it, but I don't like it enough to pay a subscription service for it. So this seems like my opportunity to have one that I can be grandfathered into not having to pay a subscription fee for. And then I'll just probably never upgrade it again because I don't need a ton of the more advanced monitoring features. How I much can, does it cost? Uh, it's a few hundred bucks, but the subscription service is more than I want to pay because it's a subscription service. I don't like paying for subscription services for hardware that I buy. I feel like either you get a subscription or you get to charge me for the hardware, you pick one. So that's what I have to say about Ura. So I use it, but I don't know if I could recommend it. If that kind of makes sense to you guys. Okay, so the regular colors are 300 USD. 300 USD? And okay. six ninety nine a month for the subscription. Yeah, seven bucks a month for a subscription. So that's like 80 plus dollars a year for this thing that you paid $300 for, which I find offensive. Yeah, I did. I got the third gen. They sent out a thing where if you got the third gen, you get the subscription for nothing. Yeah, okay. I don't know. It's one of those things where, honestly, it's not that insightful. Like, it'll, it'll tell you things like, hey, you need to get more sleep. I'm like, I know. <laughs> yeah. And I don't really fully trust the sleep tracking either because it'll tell me oh, you were, you were awake, but I was, de I was definitely just stirring. I, I did not wake up tonight. Or it'll tell me you were sleeping lightly. And I'm sitting here going, I know that I was just lying in bed talking to Yvonne. Like, I know that for a fact. So it, does, it doesn't always get it right. For the exercise tracking, though, I actually think it does a pretty outstanding job. Oh, boy. Well, I screwed up the RGB configuration for the bottom here. I have no idea which one of these is which. Oh, crud. Oh man, on their website they say uses research grade sensors. Research grade sensors. What whatever does that, that even means. mean? Back to front. We didn't R and D this very well. Um, I actually do think they've put a fair bit of work into it, though. To be honest with you, like it's just a lot better. Uh, the app is really good as well. It's really well laid out. Uh, this one I think is going to be number. You Sorry, can also, you can figure out the fans after. Focused right now. No, no, I think I've got it. I think I've got it. I think I can just do it by the length going into my cable bundle here. All right, six fans plugged in, power and RGB. We are just <clears throat> not going to worry too much about the cable management of this. <laughs> Let's get our SATA power connector over here. What is this? What is this? Why is there a USB connector here? What is this for? Dang it! You can plug it into the Commander Core. It has passed through. Can I really? Yeah, it has passed through. I don't see it. No, Jake, there's Pretty no... I'm sure it has passed through. There's no thing. I think you're blind. Pass through? There's no pass through, Jake, I swear to you. Commander. You know what? I don't think I need it, though. Because I think the, the main connector will do it. If, I think this is a backup one? Wait, no, I must need it. Because it has no, yeah, no, USB comes in here. Oh, bloody crap. Okay. Ah, I guess we're pulling the radiator off one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. That's okay. We got this. Uh, on the USB header. You know what? It's fine. It's plugging in. It's plugging in. It's coming out. It's coming out. It's going in. We got this. Easy peasy. I knew there was another USB thing. Did you just take the rat out again? Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, I got this. It's plugged in. It's done. I don't even know what this other one I plugged in is. What is, what is this one? Where did this come from? What was this? Let's just make sure that I haven't just plugged in two connectors to the same thing. They are. Wait, what? OK, now I'm confused. You know what? They're both plugged in. <laughs> Watch it be one or the other. I have to pull this thing off so that I can unplug it. Uh, I don't care right now. I just want to turn the system on and see if our airflow strategy worked. I'm going to get a monitor. OK. Ah, uh, oof. 
The video Alex built and sold a PC in the old Presario case. Uh, the case had a replacement part that had the LTT logo. I assume it was 3D printed. Anyway, the model could be hosted so I can print it from real Presario. If you tweeted Alex, um, he should be able to handle that for you, Lance. Um, Alex is, is usually reasonably responsive on Twitter, but honestly, I don't have it. And that was a project that he did down at Micro Center. Like, I don't even know if, I don't even know if he would have held on to that model. It might have just been a thing he threw together and then didn't even keep. It's pretty cool that you want to mod your old Presario, though. I love it. Uh, hold on. G uh, give me a second. I got to get my knife. OK, Jake. Let me show them the top down there. This was, this was a pretty challenging build, OK? Oh, this cable tie is indestructible. Holy crap. OK. And my knife is dull. <laughs> That's the main issue. OK. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, we are almost there. This is fantastic. Oh. We did not take the easy path, you guys. <clears throat> but we took the worthwhile path. OK. Uh, yeah, I'd rather. Hi, everybody. Uh, this, this is good enough for the RGB cable management, right, Andy? Ah, yeah. It seems fine, right? Sure. Seems fine. I think it's fine. I can have a cover. But yeah. Exactly, exactly. You're not going to see it anyway. Everything else is pretty good. If I felt like putting the work into it, I definitely could tidy that up, but I think I'm just not feeling like putting the work into it. It's kind of a shame, though, because everything else is really good, because we got the nice custom length cables, so there's not a lot of extra mess. But it is. Oh, I don't want to talk about the PCIe. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Let's let's move on. I've moved on. It's time for you to move on. <laughs> We're all moving on, Andy. All right. Yeah, you guys aren't going to see any of this. No one will ever know it was there. Oh man, I almost wonder if we should have just moved it over there, Jake. Well, just here? yeah, just set up over there instead of trying to. I mean, I guess we can. We can probably. No, no, we're good, we're good. We can clear this pretty quickly, I think. You it's not that bad. I mean, we can clear it together. We're a team, Jake. Oh. Didn't, you, didn't you see the, you, didn't you hear the theme of our Christmas party this year? What? Okay, teamwork. You did not miss that. <laughs> Christmas party was pretty fun this year. We did kind of um, like wedding style games, except that unlike at like a, like a wedding style uh, like group game, uh, we had 100% participation because at our Christmas party, we give away like thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of swag and tech and gift cards and stuff like that. So there is a, oh right, and in order to qualify for the giveaways, you are strongly encouraged, but not required, strongly encouraged to participate in the group activities like the, uh, the dress theme and the games and all that kind of stuff. Very much to your benefit. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things that's like, you don't have to participate. But everyone does. 
<laughs> but, <laughs> but everybody does it. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun because you get people who are not necessarily, you know, the kind of people who come out of their shell being strongly motivated. We had like a, uh, we had a game that we played called Shake It. So one person on the team, and the teams were by table, one person on the team had an empty like uh, paper uh, or like tissue box that was full of those little foam Nerf gun balls. And you had to like shake around to get the balls out. And then other people on your team, each person got one chopstick. So you had to work as a team to pick up the balls and carry them to another person on your team who was operating a Nerf blaster and shooting over targets. And the more targets your team knocked over, the better. So we did two rounds. I got all the targets. I'm sure you did. So we did two rounds. He won a lot of stuff this year. Uh, the two rounds were, um, the only rule, as we went from the first round to the second round, was that nobody could play the same role on a team twice. So if you had just like one outgoing person who was like taking it for the team and being the, the, the shaker, someone else was going to have to do it the next time around. No one was going to want to let down the team. It was a lot of fun. Uh, you didn't drop your what? Oh, that's OK. It's easy to fix. <laughs> not, not actually how that works. You don't want to break something These are all four on purpose. Uh, yes, yes, those are all from that, um, that bag. Oh, all right. Oh, how much you want to bet that this is built correctly? First try here. What do you mean? Like it turns on? Yeah, like everything powers up just fine. Okay, I this bet is lunch that it does turn on. case mounting hardware. Uh, this is for the AIO. Sorry, I missed one. You bet it does turn on. Okay. In that case, I'm going to break my rule. I'm going to close it up. I'm doing oh, it, Jake. OK, well, now I'm changing my bet. You can't change your bet. You already bet. No, but you, you're changing the, the I'm, parameters. I'm changing the GBs? Yeah. It's bad GBs. It's bad GBs to close a case before you're sure it's going to work. Oop. This case is really easy to pop open, though. So. Yeah, I love that change. I hated the old ones. Not too worried about it. OK. Oh, man. You know what, Jake? You went and pulled a, thinking this was a regular computer, and you put the monitor on that side. Oh, Derp. sorry. <laughs> yeah. My deepest, most sincere apologies. OK, literally the entire theme of the whole build, Jake. Come on. Well, you didn't seem to remember that throughout, so. OK, I have been focused on things. OK, this has been a little bit challenging for me. Nobody can tell. Yeah. Nobody noticed. Oh, wow, I How forgot I about, the... check this out. I forgot about the cable management thing. OK, no, no, hold on. I'll get to that. I'll get to that. One sec. Here, first, yeah. this is cool. I forgot to show you guys this cable management cover here thing. So if I just took all these and hucked them over there, this would actually look awesome because they got the cover here. I love it. I, I like it. This was a long build. And if you were a first time builder, I don't know if I would recommend this particular case, but for an experienced builder who wants something really flexible, I am liking the O11 Dynamic Evo here. You also don't have to invert it. Yeah, yeah, you could just install it normally. What is normal though, Jake? Okay, what is normal? Oh, hold on a second. Are our tolerances a little, a little funky here? There's a bit of a panel gap here. Did Tesla make this computer? Twitch chat is running a poll to see if you'll regret Ooh. putting the panel on. Okay. Hold on a second. OK, there we go. That's hooked on. OK, no, I think we're good. I think we're good. To be clear, I'm not a car guy. I don't actually even, I don't care about Tesla's panel. Oh, you don't care? got a problem. No, it doesn't really matter to me. I mean, OK, actually, I've hey, seen what if some. You spent like $100,000 on a car okay. and it's like a centimeter off. I've seen some pictures online that are pretty bad. That's I, true. I know a guy that owns a, like a wrap shop. Like for car wrapping. Yeah. And a lot of what they do, because they wrap a lot of Teslas, they even have a sub-brand specifically for Teslas. Right. A lot of what they do is fix panel gaps. But sometimes okay. doors will be welded in the wrong spot. So it's unfixable without cutting off of the cutting off the door bracket and re-welding it on like half a centimeter higher. All right. Are you talking about the one for my in-laws or the, the other one, the one we rented? Yeah. Okay. Well, 
I don't know. I've seen some pretty egregious stuff, but I think most of what I've seen, it kind of feels like people are blowing it out of proportion. I don't know. Every single one, every single person I know that has a Tesla, I can look at the car and be like, that panel gap's not very Yeah, good. but you're also a giant car nerd. Like, giant car nerd. But, okay, but if your QC is bad on every single car, is that not a problem? Well... Like, think about, okay, if every single motherboard came with one of the coolers, like, obviously crooked, you wouldn't think that's a problem? I mean, I Especially don't... if you're spending, like, you're buying a, a motherboard like this, like a $700 motherboard. Yeah. Look, I'm not saying... You're not saying it's not a problem, you yes. just don't care. I'm just saying I'm not a car guy, I don't really care. And my in-laws, they're not car people, they don't really care. I'm saying that for the average consumer, it probably doesn't make a difference to them. And that's clearly true because Tesla's not having any trouble selling their cars. Um, there we go. To be clear, I'm not a Tesla fanboy. I'm not an Elon Musk apologist by any stretch of the imagination. So don't take this to mean anything other than that I'm just not that big of a car guy and their panel gap issue is a relatively small one for me personally. That's, that's also, the, Twitch chat has predicted that only yes, fancy. you will regret putting the side panels on. Nope, nope, I already got out ahead of that. Uh, the eight pin connector was not attached. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely, I was like sitting here going, ah, oh, darn it, Jake already put away the baggie of cable mod cables. I'm gonna have to, shucks, I'm gonna have to go open up that baggie and put these case. nope, these I took out for a reason. They're supposed to go in the case. Oh boy. Ah, oh, okay. And Twitch chat, I know what you guys are thinking and you're jerks, by the way, for one thing. There we go, there's our fan filter. Oh, run that, run that. Display port. Yep, I know. That's the one I was talking about. Don't worry, I got this. Um, oh shoot, I pinned it down. There it is. Okay, so here's how it works. You take your display port cable, which cannot plug into the GPU anymore. Not here, not here, not anywhere. You run it in here. You hope that your other cable management didn't interfere with it. Whoops. Um, one moment, please. <laughs> here we go. Okay. You... Wait, how the devil are you supposed to get over there? Okay. Is it at the top or the bottom now? Will he figure it out? I am so... Stay tuned. I'm just so, so disorientimulated. I mean, yeah, that'll work. Conrad bets one lunch that it posts first try. I, I'm taking you on that, Conrad. Okay. And then that goes there. Oh, okay. Huh. How the heck am I supposed to get that in now? Lee and Lee, did you guys think of this? I thought you had small hands. I do, but my goodness. Okay, I got a solution. Ugh. Oh, this is definitely a usability nightmare. This, oh, I keep forgetting what they call it. Uh, what, what do they call this mount again? Up, upright. Upright, upright mount. Up wrong. Up, yeah. <laughs> up deeply flawed. And this, man, display port, it's, it's just, it's got this bulky, long standard connector, you know? Just not a fan, you know? I like the fair, bandwidth. I tried to give you HDMI. Yeah, but HDMI is not the right thing to use here. Oh man, I can't see the card. 4K 120 is not sufficient for lines. How do you plug in that which you cannot see? Um, okay, I think I can see it through the fan grill. I think this is DP. Um, okay, I got it. <laughs> there you go. That's... We should change the title on this to the four hour computer build. Yeah, the the non-conventional computer build. I think we've actually used that title before. You know, it's funny, when I saw James's schedule for everything he expected me to get done today, I was like, oh, that seems pretty light. I'm, I could do like way more than that. Man, I'm a productive boy. And now I see how long this build has taken. I'm like, oh, I don't think I can get all that done, James. I'm glad we started this at like 11 though. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, this is this has been this has been a challenging one. Man, it looks really good now though. It looks pretty sick. You know what? It doesn't bother me as much you anymore. You almost Jake. can't see the riser. It does it actually doesn't bother me as much. With the smoked glass, which takes a little bit of the sting off of it, like it makes it so everything's kind of obscured a little bit. 
we'll wait until we see it with RGB, I guess. Let's let's see it with the inside illuminated, but I, I'm feeling, I'm bullish. I'm bullish right now. Did you put the fan filter back on the bottom? I did. So this is my front panel. This is my top panel. I've got the whole thing put back together backwards now. Somebody's gonna have to go and tabulate how many times he pulled the power supply and uh -huh. radiator out. I pulled the board. power supply once, I pulled the radiator. No, at, you no. pulled the power supply like four times. What? No, no, not the screws. No, I only had to undo the screws once. Okay, but you took it in and out like four times. I did take it in and out a few times, yes. Okay. Oh, it's looking good, ladies and gentlemen. People I kind of need a... I need a wipe. People are saying that your riser placement is better than Steve's. My riser placement's better than Steve's? Well, Steve doesn't care about cable management. <laughs> Honestly, though, I mean, look, if you, I, I, no, nothing against Gamers Nexus. They do amazing work, but like, get real. Steve is gonna invest a bunch of his actual time into cables. He doesn't care about that. I think he cares about it from like a design standpoint if he is reviewing a product, obviously, but not from like a, you know, boy, really like beautiful cables really like make my, my day better. Are know. you ready to turn it on? That's not my, that's not my vibe. Um, oh, okay. Whoa. I, want to press the button. I, I also think, truthfully, I've probably built a lot more computers than Steve. Well, what? I probably have. Yeah. He's probably rigged up more test benches than me, but like, I actually built them for a living. I don't think he ever did. I'm doing it. Okay, we ready? I wanna press the button. Oh, what? What do you mean you wanna press the- What a weird place for I.O. Uh, it's here. Oh, I know, oh but wow. Still, this is super weird. Okay, let's talk about this, Andy. Jake has a point here. So we, wait, what is this? I don't like it. Oh, let's press the button anyway. No, 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 wait, wait. Okay. Um, Whoa, this is cool. Look at this. It's dancing. Yeah. All of our fans are. Are they spinning? I can't actually tell. HDMI no signal. That's good since we're not using HDMI. Yeah, that would have been really awkward. Uh, okay, I'm a little confusimulated right now. Hmm. Are these spinning? I actually legitimately cannot tell. I don't think so. You know what? Yeah. The, the oh, thanks, Nicholas. I think we're on some Windows drive. Maybe they are. I can't tell. Ah, uh, shoot. I think we've got code seven. If oh no, it's it's going. Okay, what were you gonna say? Uh, the the sim rig PC has the same cooler, and for some reason, it also displayed that signal or that image. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe it's, it's just, just like unconfigured. Or yeah, something? it's mad that you haven't done anything with it yet. It seems mad in general. Ninety-nine. What light is that? I'm not sure. I really hope this thing posts, though. It could be the RAM. We went conservative on the RAM, even. Not, not that. Fifty-two hundred. Well, I think the CPU will do fifty-two hundred, though. And I think it's done it on this board. Yeah. So, we good? We good? Yeah, so. We waking up? Caps lock. It does. Oh, I'm a num. System is awake, so. I'm a num lock guy. Okay, whatever. Okay, let's. Hey, you want to just hit the reset here. button or something? Yeah, the RGB on the maglev fans is not working, but I think that's actually normal. You have to configure it. Yeah, it's just a lot of our commanders are configured from us just building computers with them before, so I I get tripped out every time I see one completely button. not doing anything. I plugged in all the front panel I.O., yeah. Is that on the roof? No. Oh, we're outside. Oh, that's the back. Yeah. Oh, that's the oh. back. All right. Let's get our mouse plugged in. Come on, baby. I believe. It's because you put the side panel back. I believe. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I believe. I believe. You... The GPU is even, like, spinning down. It's like... You give it a second. It's doing stuff. Uh, oh, it's, I don't know if it was in all the way. Don't worry, we got this. I still believe. All right, let's get our LAN plugged in. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was just a little. It was a little bit loose. 
Is it a little bit loose on the CPU side too? No, it's not. That's oh, definitely in. Crank though. Uh, yes. It's a little bit tight. It looks yeah. like it's posting. Uh, well, we should be. Okay, hold on. Oh, no, oh no, what happened to our left arrow key? Okay. 7F91. Let's just give it a while. Let's give it a while. Wait, hold on. I saw something, something. Yay! Okay. All right. Wow, it like loaded on the screen. All right, new CPU installed, blah, blah, blah. CPU over temperature error. What? Is the pump plugged in? Yeah, it should be. Did you plug be. the pump power in? Yeah, I did. Press F1. Why don't you just put your hand on the pump to see if it's running? Oh, you know what? Okay. So the top piece of the pump, it, uh, there's a connector here that I probably did not um, get seated all the way. Uh, yeah, it would have to because the bottom of it doesn't have any connectors. Okay, let's have a look here. Temperatures are dropping. It went from 45 to 32 just now. Yep. Yeah, I think it's okay now. But you didn't plug anything into like the CPU fan header, right? Mm, I did. Yeah, there's no RPM sense there. Good. Can I, uh, sure. can I has? I think we're good. I think we're good. Don't you worry. Yeah, I'll move that. I'm sorry, Andy. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> the worst. The very worst. Hey, we, we know how to make videos here. Yeah, I think that. Her Jeep looks so cool. Yeah, it does. <laughs> It's pretty neat. It's a little slow. Let's give it a sec though, because it might be like hardcore thermal throttling, or at least it might have been before. The fans are slowing down. This is a bit of a long post, hey? Really thick mesh, eh? Hmm. Yeah, that might not be the best for airflow. I think it, hmm, yeah, no, I guess not much of a choice. I thought maybe this was a removable mesh, but it's not. A20, B6. Boy, that's really long. Let's see if anybody in chat has. 69. Hmm. Got something? Oh, let me just bring up my laptop here. I don't know. That's super weird, though. So there's no OS on this drive? No. Well, good thing Nicholas brought up the drive with an OS. Yeah. OK. Uh, CPU temps look fine now, though. So that seems to be working. Let's power it down and then see if that thing gets less sad when we power it up without it uh, installed improperly. Cool. Uh, oh, boy. What's the easiest one to get at here? Yeah, I think so. The top one, which is the bottom one, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. There we go. This board posts like a super micro. All right, there we go. I love these little toolless SSD things from Asus. Just a little plastic thing. Boop, SSD is freaking installed. It's done, it's over. That was it. That was the whole process. No what was little... that? A, uh, a gigabyte server board that had really nice ones? Rinky dinky screws. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we saw a gigabyte server board that had really easy ones. Uh, the engineering uh, motherboards that Intel uses for development have a super cool one as well. It's different than this. And there will be a full video about that board. Make sure you guys are subscribed. We went to Intel's R&D lab. It's taking some time to get those videos released because there's a lot of legal complications around Intel letting us into an R&D facility. Uh, there's a lot of approvals that need to be gone through, but they are going to be super, super cool videos, guys. I'm really excited to show them to you. Hey, there we go. The screen's on. That's really cool. <laughs> oh, that is some top tier nerd stuff right there. All right, where does this go? 
here we go. Okay, well, I think it's fair to say that that did not immediately post, so Jake is officially wrong. Uh, just the, the system took some finagling to get to get going. So the that little display is misled him, 480 by 480, 2.1 inch IPS. This is an. I it's 30 FPS and has 24 bit color. That's crazy. It looks really good. Hilarious. All right. Do you want me to just leave the panel open for now, Andy? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I do want to get these. I really want to know if these fans are actually spinning. I can't really tell because they have little um, little airflow guides on them that just make it really, really hard to tell if they're actually spinning or not. If you look through the top, I think they might not be. See, Andy? Oh, well, this one's not, and these two are. But I think that might just be a configuration thing. Uh, can you look away while I pin myself? Yeah, I'm good. <clears throat> Whoops. Does this have IQ on it by any chance? Yeah, that's fine. Why does it not have Chrome installed, though? Now that's an odd one. All right, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, OK, could I just get an antenna? It's the, the screw-on type. The screw-on type? Yep. Three-prong or two? Two-prong. Two-prong. Thank you very kindly. We're just going to use Wi-Fi because we have no drivers for the onboard wired Ethernet. And then, oh, we can go get the smoke machine. Uh, why don't I go grab the smoke machine while well, Nicholas goes and grabs that. So apparently this thing has a 20 amp freaking fuse on it, which absolutely blew my mind. 20 amps? Um, so that's why we've got this Chungo extension cord. It doesn't and make then, any sense. It's a 15 amp circuit. I, I know it's on a 15 amp circuit, but that doesn't mean it couldn't uh, spike above that. And since most circuit breakers are heat based, aren't they? Yeah. Um, then this would... This would work. If you drew 20 amps, it would probably blow immediately, though. You think so? Yeah, yeah. be right. OK, we're going to go ahead and put this bad boy here. OK. And then, oh, yeah, can I have that Wi-Fi antenna? Thanks. All right. I could have opened up the motherboard box, but this is actually faster and easier. We just have a bin of these things from all the years of motherboards and not needing Wi-Fi because it's stupid, <laughs> you know? Not that ugh, it's not stupid, it's useful. But in our upcoming Intel Extreme Tech upgrade with Nicole, I show an alternative to Wi Fi that is an absolute game changer. Uh, we Are you hooked her up. About Powerline? Yeah, we used uh, Powerline for her because she was having issues with, well, everything really. She was having issues with, uh, with lag and uh, with like latency spikes in particular. And what I did was I hooked her up to her Wi Fi. We saw that the speed test was fine, the bandwidth is fine. But what I did is I played a YouTube video and while doing a constant uh, ping to just like Cloudflare, 8.8.8, that's Google, 1.1.1.1, uh, something like that. I forget which one I used. And I was showing her how every time the YouTube player would load in a chunk of video, she'd get a latency spike from like 6, 7, 8, 10 milliseconds up to 150, right? Need that Wi-Fi 6. Then we hooked up Powerline, which uses your house wiring for networking. And her latencies on the ping test were more like 15. So they were substantially higher than Wi-Fi under, its, uh, under ideal conditions. But when it spiked, it would go to like 50 instead of 150. And there's a big difference between 50 and 150 I, uh, when you're gaming. We installed a outdoor access point at my mom's old house. And there was power out there. So I just used a power line adapter to get the ethernet signal to the AP. And it just worked out to be a pretty good run. And I was able to do like 400, 500 megabit consistently. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you don't happen to remember the Wi-Fi password, do you? Yeah. Uh, can you just come type it in? I can't remember it. We just changed our stupid Wi-Fi password. Oh, it's gonna get... Uh, hi there, don't, don't look at Jake, just look at me. Ha ha, uh, we're, we don't want our Wi-Fi password to leak because then we'll have to change it. Again, and that's really inconvenient because then I'll have to memorize it again. Mind you, I haven't memorized this one yet, so it's not actually more work. Are you done? Yeah, still checking. Still, yeah. still checking? Cool. <laughs> Hi, guys. Oh, you know what I could do is I could do some, uh, this is probably charged enough at this point. I could do some, some merch messages. Uh, Duncan says, ordering these to add some LTT flair to my day-to-day -day life and in, the one of a and in the one of a friend of mine. If you're thinking about making LTT a brand, I might have some ideas to help you from inside the EU. It will help with sales. 
Yeah, so our biggest problem in the EU is obviously like import tariffs and stuff, but it looks like you've got the right idea, Duncan, sort of piggybacking your own order on top of a friend so that you guys can split the shipping costs and stuff like that. The main issue with us having a logistics facility out there, which is going to fix a lot of our problems, is taxation and overhead, right? So once you have a facility, you now have to staff it and pay rent at it. And uh, you also need to deal with the complication of having a physical presence in the EU, which comes with all kinds of tax and regulatory burdens. So I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. Thanks, Ronnie W. And John B. had to get a new beanie. Someone stole mine. Picked up the uh, Dark Aqua beanie or toque, as well as an indoor hoodie. Very nice, very nice. All right. Let's switch over to our to our chat here. Uh, -da -ba -ba. Every enterprise I've seen, I'm checking out float plane chat. Powerline adapters can screw your smart meter over, by the way. We had them, it caused our meter to soar, registering some big numbers. Cost us a fortune because of that. Mm. Yeah, th that's definitely a problem with your electrical company. Th that should not, that should not happen. Also, maybe it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, are you sure no one was mining in your basement? <laughs> Just saying. Can't be having those miners. Just saying. Could happen. Oh, man. Hey, thanks for everyone tuning in, by the way. It's got 10,000 watching over on YouTube, another 5,000 over on Twitch, something like that. We don't have a view counter on Floatplane, but we love you all. Thanks for supporting us on Floatplane, however many of you there are. Awakened Redstone says, Powerline stopped working for me over time, so we gave up on it. Now we wired our entire home with Ethernet. Uh, well, yeah, obviously running Ethernet is the best way, but failing that, uh, if latency is what you're after, Powerline can be a lot more consistent. Have you managed to get logged in? Oh, but Jake, you could have told me you're... I mean, I... You were having fun. Yeah, I, I, I want to... I'm just doing you a favor. I'm sorry. I have, some, I have stuff to do. Did you get IQ? I'm working on all the stuff. Okay? Oh, all right. Well, here, do you guys want to play with the smoke machine oh, with me? Dang. Let's play with the smoke machine. Okay, so as long as, the, as long as the bottle is green, it's ready to go. Boy, this thing throws some heat, eh? Yeah, that's why I, I unplugged it out. Ooh, ooh, but, okay. So basically the idea here is to... Uh, pick it up by the handle. Maybe. Pick it up by the handle? Well, I'm not picking it up. I'm just aiming it up. I mean, I can... Yeah, it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to. Okay, sure, fine, whatever. There we go. So here we go. Oh. Ah, look at it go! Well, why don't we put the side panel on first? Yeah, yeah, no, we can. I'm just playing with it. First, I'm playing with it. Ah! That stuff's hot. That's oh, is it? Oh, me. sorry. It'll <laughs> work safe where you at. It's no, it's good smoke. This is good smoke. <laughs> yeah, it tastes like it. Yeah. Tastes like burnt marshmallows. Taste, tastes like uh, tastes like party. All right, here. Let me uh, let me get this. <laughs> by a smoke machine. Uh, yeah. Let me put the side panel on. No, I don't consent. I don't want communication. Ah, here we go. Don't worry, I got this, I got this. Man, this is going to be kind of hard to get it to draw in any smoke because the whole intake's at the bottom here. I guess we could kind of jam it in there. Oh, this is a good looking case. You know what, this run is actually not that bad, I'm kind of over it. With the smoked oh, side panel? Diet. Yeah, with the smoked side panel, like, if we had a bit of a flashier GPU, like if we had RGB fans on it and stuff like that, like if it was really, really flashy, I think it would draw attention away from that as well. I think it'd be fine. It'd be fine. All right, let's do a quick, let's do a quick smoke here. So if we'll just kind of... Oh, epic game store. Okay, so here we can have a look here. So as intended, the air goes through the case, which is good, I suppose. Hey, the RGB's on. Nice. Now, this one's still not. Thanks. The, uh, the whole system just system? blue screened when I went to update the AIO. Uh, OK. <laughs> Hopefully, that doesn't break the AIO. Um, Let me just hit the reset button. That's unfortunate. Oh, no, no, it's got this. The world's longest post. OK, the GPU fan is actually running now. Look, so let's hold on, hold on. <laughs> Maybe try shooting it from the back. From the back? You mean the front? The... No, it's not. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so it's not covering. When you shoot it here, you can't see the front. 
Okay, you can kind of see it pulling in the thing. Oh yeah, I could do that. Yeah, sure. Hold on, just let me do, let me. I'm playing with the smoke, Jake. Jeez. Jeez. Look, I'm just I'm a little, little on edge. Haven't I eaten haven't had a donair today. Yeah. Okay. A Look, I have also not had a donair yet today. Okay. Sky in chat is losing his mind. <laughs> You're saying it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, let's try and update it again. I hope it doesn't. Uh, really? It is working. Isn't that, don't they say that's the definition of insanity, doing the same thing and expecting a different result? didn't restart Windows last night. Mm. Oh, there we go. It Could works. very well be. Man, I'm liking this RGB. I really would like this fan to spin, though. I don't know what the deal is with that. It's probably unplugged. You think so? I don't think so. I can double check. Man, it's, it's actually pretty quick to get at. Um, so that would be I fan number one. two. Yeah, fan two. Oh, shoot. It was unplugged. All right. Good one. Oh, it's still not going, though. Well, it hasn't like, detected it yet. Oh, OK. I don't know if there's a way to restart my user. Just, uh... Oh, I unplugged it. <laughs> there we go. Is it in now? Yeah, it's definitely in. Restart IT service again. It hasn't like, detected. Let's just reboot. Yeah, okay. let's just reboot it. Sweet. I like this RGB scheme. Is that the default? I think so. No, it looks yeah, cool. the MLs only have like four or like LEDs. That's fine. They're more about performance anyway. I get it. But why not both? Um, oh, these are the old ones, right? Oh, you can't see yeah, you can't see the new ones pretty much at all. I think nope, it does. They do have way more. They have at least eight. I think they have eight. Uh, I could do that, or I could read merch messages from Sean C. Hey, Linus, been watching for many, many years. Finally decided to get a water bottle. Hey, heck yeah! Oh, looking forward to the backpack. Okay, I'll give you guys the update on the backpack while Jake does uh, what he's doing over here. Oh, so here's the current iteration, uh, or rather, this is like. Okay, this is not the first oh, I like the prototype. Oh, yeah. So let's talk through what we have now and what's going to be different. So what we have now is a super robust, um, I don't know, Bridget calls it the self, which I guess means it's like the, the main material of the bag. So we've just got this super robust self material. Why is this lowercase? Waterproof zippers. Uh, our branding is technically lowercase, actually. I think it's older. Uh, we're on the fence about even having that there or not, so don't worry too much about that. But waterproof zippers all around. Um, sunglass holder, but not a super hard shell one, like kind of in between. It's got, it's actually like a, like a gel sheet. So it offers a little bit of structure, but it doesn't stick out. It doesn't bulge into this pocket. So this I call the pocket of holding or the bag of holding pocket because it's just got one zipper, so you could huck your, I keep my dongle in here, got some lip chap, got uh, my portable SSD. <laughs> hey, look, chap lips is a bad thing. You don't want to, no, no one should be too much of a man yeah, to put the, some. The, the chapstick makes your lips chap. Uh, it does? does? Apparently. Wow, I've never had that experience. Uh, we've got a water bottle holder in here. Orange interior, so that it's easy to find, like, sorry, <laughs> just going. Okay, so a water bottle holder goes right there. And then the main zipper for like the bag of holding bag, which you're supposed to be able to just like huck stuff into easily without anything getting in the way. It goes down only part way on one side because we've got this side zipper here, which I use for my mouse. Uh, you can also just kind of put some other stuff in there. You got a, a mesh pocket in case you want to put some stuff in there. I think we're going to leave this mostly the same as it is now. Little pen pocket there. On the other side, it goes down here so that you can just pull open one side, get at your water bottle, and then chuck it back in. So it's, uh, it works with the 40 ounce, and then we put this kind of this elastic thing here, so that if you use the 20 ounce, it'll just kind of sit a little bit smaller. But it's designed with the 40 ounce in mind. Um, this we're kind of on the fence about. I don't like that if you pile a bunch of stuff in here, which I have a tendency to do. Oh, by the way, I brought back a bunch of Expo markers. Thank 
you. Camera, oh. camera den. Thanks. Uh, I always carry them home in my back pocket. I just have this. You see, I have one in my back pocket right now. I, whenever I fill out the slate, I just chuck it in my back pocket because I know I'll probably need it again. And so I just have my nightstand ends up full of expo markers anyway. Uh, so I tend to kind of pile stuff in here. And it means when it's open like this, it's kind of flopsy like this, right? I don't like that. But what I realized is that if we, if we do it like uh, we thought about changing it to like this, and then it flaps open, uh, and then it would flap open vertically, and then things would fall out. So I think we're going to leave it like this and just say, look, the intended use case is you open it like this for access, and then this if you really want to like get at something. But it's sort of meant to just be opened on two sides at a time. We're changing this, uh, the pocket configuration in here, though. So this one is going to stop here. This, no, uh, it'll stop here. So it'll just be like that. So I keep a little pouch of just kind of stuff I need, you know, little jeweler screwdrivers, weird adapters, just stuff you never know when you're going to need. Um, a, a one gig USB drive, you know, in case you run into something that needs to be formatted FAT32 or whatever. And this pocket is going to be lengthened for the screwdriver. So you're, it'll actually have a, a spot that's perfect for putting a screwdriver or other tool. Uh, these, I think, are going to be split down the middle and just two pockets. So they'd be perfect for like a pair of pliers or, um, you don't, or, or side cutters, stuff like that. So I expect you to kind of have some tools in this kind of easy access pocket here. And you'd kind of get at it like this. Um, let me have a look here. This is obviously what makes it a tech bag, though. So we didn't bother with the checkpoint friendly uh, opening up all the way because every airport I've ever been to, and it's a lot of them, has not allowed you to just leave your laptop in your bag anyway. So there's no point having that feature, and I'd rather have better structure. So this is, where's my framework? Where's my, oh, there's a middle one on the top. Is it going? It's going. Sort of. Look, it's not happy though. Oh wow, it's going super slow. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, that might be why it's going so slow, I guess. Um, oh, it's off now. So it was on. Anyway, <clears throat> Jake will figure that out. So the laptop pouch is here. And we don't actually have a big pad on the bottom for the laptop pouch. But what we did is we changed the way that the material is sewn. So what happens is it creates kind of a taper at the bottom of the pocket. So when you drop it in like that, you can hear it effectively adds padding without having to add more weight and more bulk to the bottom of the backpack by having it sort of decelerate more slowly or negatively accelerate uh, <laughs> less rapidly. Uh, this is a bit of a um, oof oopsie, I guess I'll call it. They put this kind of pleathery material in here. Uh, that was not the intention. This is going to be more of like a microfiber, and this is intended for your tablet or some other like, touchscreen device. And then this one over here will also have a microfiber and is intended for a Nintendo Switch or a Steam Deck or something along those lines. Now, one thing we screwed up on this one is that right now, when there's something in, I uh, forget what pocket it is, but I was traveling, and there was something in here or something, and what it did was it kind of forced this pocket out like this, made it really hard to get into the very bottom of this pouch, which is where I like to put my power adapters. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to move this one to the front here, which would make it a little bit easier to, to get down there. Then we've just got a couple more pockets. You've got your like ch uh, charger, your battery bank. I still carry business cards for some reason. Um, there's other little things. Uh, these zippers are going to be little carabiners so that you can clip them together for additional security. It's not obviously going to keep out someone with a knife who's going to cut open your bag or whatever else. But if you're traveling, for example, one of the things that I worry about is it being really easy to open up my backpack while I'm standing talking to someone. So that'll mean it's just a fair bit more work to decouple these from each other, then unzip your bag. It also means that uh, if you ride a motorcycle, for example, which I do, um, and you have something sticking out of your bag, um, which often happens with me because I'll carry my badminton rackets if I'm going to the gym or something. It means that you can have something sticking out, clip them together, and then not have to worry about your thing going flying out while you're going down the road. So those are the main reasons why I wanted that. Um, this is pretty reflective of what the final construction will be like. 
So it actually does, this strap does go all the way to here. So this would be basically impossible to pull off. Um, another thing we're, uh, we haven't done yet, but we're gonna add, this accent is gonna be um, closer to this color, by the way. This is just, it was available material, but it's gonna be custom and custom. Uh, the bottom is gonna be doubled. So that's our plan right now, is we want to take the self, so that's this material, and do two full layers. So if you're the kind of person who's like me and you're a little bit careless with your things and you just kind of, like, will slide your bag, just you get home, you just huck it into the corner, you wear out the bottom, it should be a little bit more difficult to do on this. Uh, because if you wear through one of the layers, there's going to be another layer right there. We spent a ton of time on the foam. I, I spent a lot of time carrying around backpacks on trade show floors, and I've seen a lot of, in theory, comfortable materials on both the backing and the straps that have just not panned out like that. And this one's really good. You don't want a foam that's too soft. You want a foam that's actually got a fair bit of structure to it. So that was a bit of a challenge. The chest strap, there's been some debate. Uh, right now it's removable, so you can see there's these snaps. So you undo these snaps and then you can actually completely remove the chest strap. It was a good idea in theory. The problem is that um, I went and I tried to hang something off the chest strap, like a walkie-talkie or something like that, and it kept pulling it off. So what we've settled on is a partially removable chest strap. So one side will come off. No, one side will come off? No, no, it's not removable anymore. Never mind. We settled on not removable. And then what you'll be able to do if you don't want it is you can just take it and tuck it up in here. It's not official functionality, but you can do it. Um, if you really don't want it, I think the solution is to undo this. So we're gonna have um, a little clip kind of like this, and then you can do that on the other side, and then you just won't have to have it. So uh, what else are we changing? These are gonna be metal, which is gonna be sick. We're gonna add um, somewhere specifically to put flare like this. I forget exactly what it's, oh yeah, it's gonna be straps like this because that's a better solution for the walkie-talkie. So we'll have some little straps kind of like we have on the, the side. So the idea here is that if you have like headphones or something like that, um, you've got a convenient place to just, or like a, a, a pillow for the plane or something, it just comes with a way to just kind of easily hang stuff off of it. So we'd have something similar to these cross straps just on here. Um, I don't think if there's anything else to really say other than just, yeah, it being super, super rugged. Um, oops, there you go. I guess, oh, whoops. I was about to look at some, some chat messages and I realized I put my laptop in my bag. <laughs> there you go, cool, hold on. I just put a fan splitter on one of them because. Oh. Because, I don't know. All right, problem solved. Way to go, Detective Jake. You didn't solve the case, but boy, did you ever work around it. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> OK. All right. So why don't we get a game fired up and have a look at what our airflow path looks like. Uh, we'll, sure, we'll fire up Cyberpunk here. Cyberpunk. Oh, the best game. I got loads of this machine. I heard it's I heard it's a really good game, Jake. You gonna go HDR? Uh, no, I'm just gonna go high refresh rate. Oops, I didn't mean to go to 144. Why not? Uh, cause the chroma subsampling well, nonsense. So it doesn't look very good. HDMI. What? HDMI. Oh no, this one's like only HDMI 2.0. So even oh. if you have a 2.1 card, it won't. Yeah, this is an older monitor actually. Oh, oh wait, you can just continue without a cam. Thank you. Yep. So you said you wanted me to turn this on now, right? Uh, hey, thanks, anonymous. Merry Christmas to you too. Heck yeah. Loving it. All right, I'm having a look at the chat. Uh, SJ Watt asks, will it handle 18 pieces of flare? Hey, I'm glad you got the reference. I think it would. Hi, can I help you? Well, I just wanted you to make, make you look all hot and steamy. Hey, hey, you don't need a smoke machine for that, baby. All right, let's get Cyberpunk fired up here. Um, oh, 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 someone asked about, um, uh, putting it onto your carry-on luggage strap thing. So we have an idea for that. We want to put snaps here, 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 and here, and then we want to have a thing that wraps around that you can tuck away into the passport pocket if you want. By the way, there's a passport pocket. Uh, so we want to have a thing that you could tuck in there if you don't have your passport in there. I actually prefer to keep my passport in uh, this one um, or elsewhere, but we're going to have straps here and here, and then it'll be a little thing you fold up and tuck away. And we just need to see if it holds on strong enough 
And if it does, then we're gonna do it, but we don't wanna compromise the comfort of it as a backpack in order to have it work better as a thing that you put over your handle of your carry-on. So that's where we're at on that. Um, Isn't this game a dead meme at this point? Yeah, but it's demanding. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Silent Node. Yeah, styling not ostentatious, well-featured. Exactly, exactly. Uh, there's lots of zippers. That's actually a big part of why it's costing so much. Zippers are super expensive, especially waterproof ones. Um, and it's not just the, like, the zipper. Like You could go to Fanny's Fabrics and be like, oh, the zipper's not that expensive. But it's the construction. It adds a lot of complexity. All right. Wow, is this still loading? Is it like broken or something? Uh, what about the water bottle pocket? It has one, has one. Uh, that's possible. It's Seriously? I mean, it doesn't really surprise me that even, much. Even oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, Rick. Oh, jeez. Why is it like this? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. At least you can click on the taskbar and go to the Oh, come on. Um... So task manager won't come up. Okay, my trick is log out. Oh, yeah, log out. That's a good one. Yeah. It's so stupid. Okay, if anyone from Microsoft is watching, whatever it is that you use to kill a task for log out, use it for end task. End task means end the task. It doesn't mean think about ending the task. It doesn't mean end the task later. It means end the task, and they clearly have the ability to do it. Well, that time I just couldn't. Yeah, but it doesn't. Why don't we just press something else? It doesn't matter. When you right click something down here and you say close, yeah. it means go away. Well, there's different types, of, there's different types of close signals. Well, then put both of them in there. Yeah, like a forced close. Yes. Oh, there's a lot of oh, I'm hungry. Are you hungry. Hi, hungry. I'm Linus. Oh, nice. Yeah, I always pull that with my kids because yeah, I'm like a hyper. Yeah, thank you for that. I'm a hyper stickler for like P's and Q's. And so. My kids know they're just not going to get anything. Like, they, like, fall over and, like, hurt themselves. And if I see it, I'm like, ah, oh, they're not that badly hurt. If they're, <laughs> if they're like, like, pick me up, I'm going to be like, like, can you pick me up, please? Yeah, sure thing. Come here. Mm -hmm. Feel better I'm now. I'm hungry, please. <laughs> I'm hungry, please. <laughs> why, games, why do you take so long? I don't need your propaganda. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, especially. How good of a game this is that you already launched. There's some cool features. <laughs> that you paid for. You've been playing this game for 300 hours. Can we tell you the same thing again? Yeah, exactly. All right, 4K, you render resolution, 1080p. What? Wait, what? What is this? What? Pardon? The LSS oh, okay. is on. Oh. There you go. There we go. Now I can see. All right, that'll help. And then just crank it. Huh. I mean, it's the 3090, right? If 3090 can't do it, then. Uh, Motion blur. Ray tracing high? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it should be fine. Maybe. Ooh, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. Alt Z. Did the GPU fans just spin up? Uh, yes, they did. And they're barely going right now. They'll give them some time, though. They'll go. I can't remember what article it is. They'll go. I think it was Tom's hardware. Well, but they said this is the quietest 3090 they've tested. Really? Is it even on? The, Put the, your ear up to that. Wow. I mean, it, you got to give it a sec to heat up. But still. The system's super quiet. I mean, it's already at 71 degrees on the GPU, which is probably about where it's going to end up. OK, now we can hit this thing with our smoke machine. OK, yeah. yeah, pour some gas on this fire, boys. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working oh, on it. Geez, sorry, sorry, that. sorry, 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 sorry. Is that loaded? It's loaded, boys. Loaded. OK, here we go. Oh, here. Here, hold on. Oh, nice. Okay, perfect. It looks like it, you know, it sucked over to the GPU. That's kind of cool, actually. Hold on. Let me try a slightly different angle here. Oh, crap. Can you help me with the cable management of this thing a little bit, please? Thanks. Okay, here we go. Very oh, no. Okay. It seems to work pretty 
so how are we doing? Like, so it turns out just having an unobstructed path of airflow through your case is a good thing? I mean, it's clear. Like, it doesn't linger at all. Mm -hmm. from, a, from an aesthetic standpoint, I, I'm not a huge fan of this whole PCIe riser over the thing thing. Mm -hmm. But from an airflow standpoint, man, this seems to make a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Can we do that again? I want to crank the fans. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if this is 100%, but it's probably It's bad. going. You can tell these fans are struggling comparatively. Like it gets sucked in and then it's just slowly going. You see that? It's going okay. You should look at the screen though. Look at hold that. on, hold on. Because you got to remember, part of it might just be that. Um, yeah, it's coming out the back because I'm not getting all of it under the case. Here, I'll spray here, you. Hold on. Here, here. Whoop. Hello, buddy. Uh, whoop. Sir? Okay. I mean, it's going. Yeah, it's going for sure. It's like the smoke is not the case very long. Nope. That's pretty cool. That's super cool. Uh, you're getting pink goo everywhere. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a little bit of pink goo on stuff. Um, and I'm getting to the end of this stream. Hey, thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks everybody for sending in them merch messages. We, uh, we really appreciate y'all. Thanks to uh, NZXT Build for sponsoring the video today. You guys can check them out at the link in the video description. Super easy way to get a system that you're gonna know exactly how it's gonna perform with their performance guarantee. All the details are gonna be down below. And I think that pretty much wraps it up. Hopefully y'all were entertained. This was certainly an unusual machine to build, but I think the result is kind of outstanding actually, hey? Yeah, it looks sick. And not just looks like it's, it's got that it's got that cooling flare. I love hey, it. Look at the AIO. That's the best part of the rig. The AIO? Yeah, yeah. Like the, the LCD. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, it's very funny. <laughs> Alright, go ahead and go ahead and kill it. Kill it? Well you didn't say like what what video should they watch? Oh yeah. You guys are you guys have you not had enough yet? Uh, why don't you go watch I love building computers. I build like six computers in a row. It's great. And uh, buy some merch.